<laughs> what is there no audio or something? Yeah, uh, everyone laughed like really Luke said something funny. Yeah. <laughs> I need another countdown. Put it back on. Count me down. No, put it back on the fucking thing. Count me down, put, and put I'm doing my one. What the fuck is going on? Welcome to the game room. My name is Luke the DM, and it's my job to kill everybody. Happy fucking Thursday. We are here. We can have audio that functions properly, and we're so happy to have everybody here. You can't hear me? No, I can hear you. We can all hear you, you can fine. Hear me. I'm just saying, no, <laughs> yes. no we can't Let's have go. audio that functions, because I am doing yes. it. Yes, we can. Guys, it is Thursday night. I am back in the DMC in what feels like the first time in a very long time. It's been like, it's a, been month. like a month. Yeah, because I ran too long. I ran two too in long. a row. Uh, Kraken no, ran before time. me. Tea time. Yeah, we had tea time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a while. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Um, guys, we have Adventure Tier here right now. The best of the best in tack. All of our strongest are most clever, our bravest, our sneakiest, all of the above. Um, and tonight, it has been decided, you know, I'm trying to kind of get a feel for the vibe of what the people want, and the people have spoken. Oh, it's time for to, to dunk on some Daiban. We're going to explore the Daiban plotline a little bit more. We're going to try to save another neighborhood of Kadoria. But, before we get into all that juicy goodness, we've got announcements, as we always do in the game room, so we will get through those. Um... Quickly going through all the sponsor links, um, we've got uh, a few links that we'd love for you to click on and check out uh, if you like to support the stream. First and foremost, Reaper Miniatures, um, all things D&D &D tabletop. Uh, if you want paint, if you want affordable minis, if you want scenery, they've got all sorts of really cool stuff. And uh, every time you click on that link, it actually shows them that, hey, we're paying attention. Um, so definitely go, even just browse, you don't have to buy anything, but you can get cool dinosaurs and T-Rexes, and, I mean, you name it, they got it. Not even just for D&D, &D, but all sorts of tabletop stuff, so definitely check them out. This is just a children's toy I bought at, uh, um, Family Dollar. I don't know what you're talking about. It's a Reaper Mini. <laughs> uh, next on our list is, uh, Inked Gaming, for all sorts of customizable stuff. Uh, really, really cool, uh, really intuitive website where you can get... All sorts of merch, mouse pads, t-shirts, face masks, you name it. If you got a picture and you want it on something, they can do it. Um, pretty reasonably priced, I would say. I think, um, the, I think they like to keep it safe for work, but that's about it. Ah, uh, okay. Well, yeah, don't be weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um but but honestly genuinely cool like i got like this cool like luke the dm mouse pad like you know just just good stuff and what i what i do want to preach about ink gaming is that they take the time to like quality test your stuff so if you're like an idiot on the internet like me and you're just like uploading a jpeg and you have no idea what you're doing they will actually go with that extra mile and like align it and make it look pretty for you and, and so your your hoodie or your you know your gaming tote bag doesn't end up looking like crap um so definitely kudos to them for that big shout outs and check them out too um, and if you want to support us directly, we have our Etsy store with all sorts of really cool merch featuring art from our community's artists, which is awesome and super, super, you know, like amazing to think about. And here at the game room, we like to support our artists who support us. And so 50% of those proceeds will go directed to the artist whose art is featured. The other 50% goes to um, pretty much just general maintenance and upkeep of the game room, you know, subscription fees to roll 20 and D and D beyond and all that. And then, uh, the rest of it, we try to throw back at the community in the form of giveaways and stuff that we do a few times a year. So, uh, you know, the more you give, the more you get in that sort of way. So, uh, and, and it's pretty cool to check out, you know, to rep the, the clan. Um, we got hoodies up there. It is getting chilly. Uh, I just bought a couple of them for myself today. So, um, it's definitely cool. check it out. Um, on the note of D&D, &D, we have a few tack related announcements. Um, just going forth, uh, backstory mission log, we've got, um, Cricket's backstory mission. It's in the ranks, I just want to keep bringing it up so people don't forget about it. Um, when, when, uh, Scribe's life gets a little more calm, we will definitely be running that. Um, we've got next week, big hype, is, uh, KCMO's backstory, aka Ferdinand Scars. We got a pretty baller crew pick for that. Um, and uh, not, the concept... Harper's not in it. Harper's not in it. No, but uh, can't be baller without Harper. 
<laughs> oh, trust me, we'll be we'll be plenty baller. We'll be extra baller. Forge is getting close. Mm -hmm. Um, so definitely look forward to that. And we've got Willow's backstory number two Ooh, cashed in fifteen oh. points. Um, that is uh, date to be determined, but probably looking at like maybe like the first week of October, a few weeks. Maybe we'll maybe. see. We'll see. We'll see. It's up. It's up in the air. Nothing. Nothing official yet, but we will uh, announce that when information presents itself. Um, as always, we would like to encourage people to apply and uh, and post ideas. Uh, contact either me or we will about being a guest DM here on the game room. We want to try to feature uh, more people putting their spin on things. It's an interesting, unique format. It can be challenging, so we're here to help guide and tweak and offer suggestions, but um, we want to try to, you know, freshen it up a little bit, get some new spice in here, so, uh, you know, variety and all that. Um, so if you are at all interested in giving it a shot, um, definitely don't be shy. We'll try to work that into the schedule. Um, I know we've got a couple people that have already posted some interest, so we're going to try to work that into the schedule in the next month or so. It's tough with, like, backstory missions and everything you know tea time kind of came in there so we'll, we'll we'll make it happen don't worry we have not forgot about you if you've already expressed interest okay other than that i think that's all i've got we, we got anything on the back of your mind nah all righty D &D. then let's play some more D &D. all right D &D. our story begins as they always do in the beautiful free city of kadoria on the lonely peninsula to the north of the midnight sea and there on that prime central thoroughway drag known as Avandra's Alley, right where it turns right into the south onto Melora's Way. In that central town square known as Ava's Piazza sits a beautiful three-story mansion, which now serves as the Tea Leaf Adventuring Company Guild Hall. I still got it, baby. And to catch you guys up on recent events of the last few months, the city of Kayoria has been taken over by a nefarious group of shadow magic wielding ninjas and cultists known as the Daiban Order, uh, which seeks to uh, redistribute the political power and wealth of the free city and empower the uh, downtrodden, the abandoned, and the meek. Um, and as part of this plan, they have, uh, through some sort of magical means, and captured the city of Kadoria in total nightfall and, and magical darkness, which has um, sort of uh, dominated the city's climate and atmosphere for going on a few months now, actually. Um, so you can imagine, without seeing the sun for several months, um, the... I'm tired of these damn rickets. <laughs> the... Uh... <laughs> The general atmosphere of Kadoria in this time is very much one of depression, anxiety, misery. Um, you can imagine that circadian rhythm that people get into is disrupted. People are sleepless, tired, weak. And yet there are little pockets of hope, little whispers, little rumors that despite this bewitching magic... Um, that's got a hold on the people of the city against the Tealeaf Adventuring Company and the other guilds that govern the city. There are pockets of resistance, and through the actions of the Tealeaf Adventuring Company, um, it seems like there are these little glimmers of hope kind of just popping through, like weeds through concrete. Tonight, our heroes have gathered together um, in the hopes of achieving... A few things. Number one, um, Marigold Streamstep, the matron of the Tealeaf Adventuring Company, has, in her attempts to relax and her inability to fully let go, um, has done some research in her own mysterious ways and learned about something that she's she's told the Tealeaf Adventuring Company about called a Nightfall Pearl. Um... And through her research, she, she's realized, she, she hypothesizes that the Styban Order is using sort of a an enhanced, a refined version of these pearls to, to take control of the city. So the primary objective of this mission is, number one, to safely return one of these pearls back to Miracle so that she may further study and examine it. Through her 
means of magical divination and scrying and, and identification. She's going to try to find out the origins of what exactly these are, how they work, and where they were made. Number two, uh, after gleaning as much information out of these this pearl as possible, this crystal, um, to destroy it and free yet another borough district neighborhood of Kadoria. And Mr. Harper P. Swinnington has uh, some nefarious connections here in the city, and there's a particular individual that might be able to assist in organizing some of these pockets of resistance. Um, a rather uh, shady cartographer, we'll call him, uh, yeah. happens to be his his LPK, as it were, was in a particular district. And so, with all of these objectives in mind, our heroes tonight gather in the Guild Hall Lounge. Uh, right in front of the bar, right in front of the fireplace, uh, Marigold kind of seated on the couch, just looking cozy. You know, like a nice big oversized sweater, uh, her hair's up in like a messy bun, uh, just knitting and like sipping on some tea um, as she kind of uh, sits there and, and listens in on the discussions of this evening. So we'll pick it up from there. Uh, I'm bored! Harper's just spinning around in a swivel chair. Laying back like this with his arms down. Uh, I can't go outside. We could vacation in the one area that has light. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, Forge! I would love to go for a walk in Solomon's slums. You know why they call it that? Because there's nothing to do. There's nothing to make money. It's There's sunlight. You could say it's cancerous. <laughs> <laughs> Marigold kind of just sips her tea and just kind of like watches and, and, and is just observing all of this. And she kind of like looks a little nervous, but is is trying to relax. So, so Marigold, where are we, where are we getting these pearls that you want? Do we have to like buy them from a jewelry store or something? No, um... So, I, my theory is that when we just, when we found and promptly destroyed the first pearl, um, that's what caused the, the sunlight to return to the slums. Um, so, logic kind of, you know, would dictate that the Diaban Orders got several of these, these crystals, these pearls, whatever we want to call them, kind of distributed throughout the city. And so if we can destroy them one by one, we can free up you know, regain control of, of more of the city. Um, Where do we think the one that we are going after is? Well, well, may I? Go ahead, Harper. So, um, we are we're, we're, the goal is threefold. So, uh, the there, there's this guy I know. Is a uh, um, goes by the name uh, fuck. Oh, Liam Inkfingers. Another one of your Inkfingers. cousins. Forge, shut up right now. Um, yeah, Liam Inkfingers. Finger, he's a he's a map maker, and we think that he might have some maps to various tunnels under the city. He's been doing this a while, you see, and he may be somebody who can get a resistance organized. The downside of that being is that he lives over in the Quay. The key. That word is pronounced key. I. I I read it first. <laughs> key. It's Jervive's key. key. There's an alliteration. Jervive's key. Yeah, see bitch key. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, Jervive's uh, key. Uh, Jervive's key. Yeah, it's the Dock District. Docks and sea. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, Marigold will actually provide a map of Kadoria. Perfect. Um, <laughs> Thank so you, Marigold. Actually, if we want to show the audience this, um, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. go to map. Go to Kadoria. Let's go to show to players. And if you click on that, it'll go full screen. Um. Key. Oh, what a, love, what a lovely map. It is a very lovely he's map. Going to. Um. He's going to like <laughs> roll it out and look over it for the for the where Gravives District is. Yep. Key. Anyway, can I? cast clairvoyance on that area 
Oh shit! You can do that, can you? I can. Ah! What is the what is the range on clairvoyance? Uh, let me double check because okay. I'm not a hundred percent sure. One mile. Clang will, Clang will offer one a, mile. Clang will offer one of the many strays he's probably accumulated it's because just of the Cali amulet <laughs> as moral support. <laughs> All right, and you're casting this through your. Um... It's going to take me ten minutes. I'm going to cast it through my circle, yeah. Okay. And I can only do it once a day. Okay. So the city of Kedora is fairly big, but one mile is quite a distance. Um. So you, uh, get, give me some flavor. Give me some. Give me some juice on this. How, how does how does your clairvoyant spell work through that circlet? So he's going to. Uh, he he rolls out the paper. And looks through the map, finding the district. He's going to close his eyes. And you see the the spectral shadows start to like form and twist. The blue misting like through it and out the corners of his eyes. And slowly it'll trail down and like down his arm to the tip of his finger where he touched the Shaviv's key. And an, a, an eye will slowly form on the paper, Ooh, but creepy. also, but also wherever in the district that he had touched. Gotcha. So Q, you feel your consciousness with that sort of forming shadow, sort of centered from behind your eyes and in your in your head, kind of flowing through your body down to the very tip of your finger. And as you touch that map, there's sort of a blink. And you feel slightly hazy, slightly disoriented um, as you look around. And it's this very sort of dissociated feeling. It's very sort of... Uh, y- you're formless. You are sort of this invisible shadow, this fly on the wall looking around in this um, immediately dark, dreary lifeless wharf district the key um is sort of the um sort of the shipping um harbor district you can uh hear so now is it, sorry with clairvoyance is this strictly sight or can you also hear uh i can choose seeing or hearing okay so, so you're choosing sight sight okay um you at first see very little as it is just this nightfall and and slowly over the course of about 30 seconds to a minute or so that vision kind of adjusts and you get that little bit of sort of like night vision in the way that a normal human eye would kind of be able to see outlines silhouettes things like that and you can see um closely tightly packed small warehouses shop fronts offices things of that nature uh what's the closest shop front to my sensor um you would turn, and it appears to be some sort of like broken down, dilapidated. Um, it's it, it, there's like a sign. It's a little dark to read, but it's kind of like hanging on a couple of hinges. Um, and as you're trying to observe it and read it, you just quite can't. But as you as you're watching, about a minute passes, and you see out of the corner of that vision, kind of causing you to like pan over, um, two little flickers of almost candlelight or torchlight kind of begin to illuminate and slowly approach and there's that sort of like backlit um you know that glare of the candle in the midst of all this darkness kind of blinds you to the rest of the surroundings it's here that i want to switch to hearing okay as you switch you feel that vision fade and suddenly in this dark expanse you can hear the soft gentle lapping of waves against the pier and you can hear the shuffling of feet, these sort of slow, monotonous, drudging footsteps. You hear them stop for a moment, turn, and you hear a voice. Um, what languages do you speak, you? Give me one moment, DM, and I will let you know. I speak. I bet you they're not even here. <laughs> Common, Corey, and I believe Celestial. Okay. What he spoke. So you listen, and in these very hushed 
near whispers, it's very soft spoken, are these spine tingly, guttural, and evil words in a language that you don't quite understand, but you, with even lacking that understanding. Oh, and infernal. Never mind. (laughs) You, You hear these words and immediately start to understand them as in infernal you hear this exchange walk with the light brother you as well how fares the battle the people of the key are subdued they are obedient should those adventurers show up we are prepared you hear the the, rep- the reply excellent are our visitors comfortable? And the reply. As best we can tell, their means of communication are limited, but their thirst for violence is proving somewhat difficult to satisfy at the moment. Understood. Do your best to restrain them, but understand that they are to be treated as welcome guests. Understood. And you kind of hear that footsteps begin to, to walk off again. And you, you hear that voice kind of fading. Walk with the shadow, brother. And that's when the spell kind of fades. And you feel that snap kind of back into your, your body, back into the guild hall, back into that warm light of this building. Snap back to reality. Sorry. Oops, he there he goes gravity. looks around for a moment. Did it work? Yeah. Uh, they're expecting us. Oh. The, the people are subdued. Uh, they've got visitors whose desire to slaughter, for lack of better term, can't really be stated. But I are to be treated like guests and uh tried to be restrained uh travel in the light was the first greeting and tr- and or walk in the light was the first greeting and, and walk in the shadow was th- the parting um oh man that hurt a lot more than i thought it would and he just like rests his head down on his palm and goes quiet for a moment <laughs> Marigold would kind of like quietly like pour a little small teacup and kind of just like silently like acknowledging that pain, but just like as a little gesture of comfort, slide a cup of tea to to Q. Thank you. Can't take it. So, um, would those uh, little sayings mean anything to any of us, or? Um, so, most of you, I would think at this point, have interacted with the Die Band Order in some form or another. Yeah. I think maybe Clang is, this is, might be your first time? Not. Uh, were they in the, t- were they in the tunnel where we had, like, the, uh, ceiling fight? Or, like, the holes in the ceiling that people were? You know, was that this group, or was that another group? <laughs> I think that's another the, group, but... Yeah, yeah that's the, not really the, anything else. The... Sh- it's like the shadow monks and like the hideout or something. Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, now I know. What you're, yeah, that's the same group. Um, okay. So, um, I missed everything you, that session. So, talking, <laughs> you've Very heard. You've heard. Um, walk with the light and walk in the shadow as these sort of dogmatic greetings um, used by members of the Die Band Order um, as sort of a. a, a, a Almost in the same way, like a peace be with you when also with you sort of thing. Um, it's just sort of a, a very, um, like, indognated, indoctrinated call and response sort of thing. Um, you don't know, you know that with the with the, the the sort of motif, obviously with the city and darkness and everything, and a lot of these like rumors and, and missives that have been spread. Um, the themes of light and shadow and darkness kind of intertwine seem to be kind of their kind of their shtick, kind of their motif, if you will, their aesthetic. So, 
It's hard to uh, read more than that. Who here was at that original mission where the city went dark? It was me, we <laughs> Nix, uh, were you uh, there? Or? No, because it was, I, there was... There were ladies there was with Onka, us. There was Onka, there was Ciaran, okay. there was Callie. Yeah. Yep, and me. Mm -hmm. So, um... Yeah, this is, um... This is a pickle. Uh, so, uh, Harper, do you think they'll make the whole city attack us again, or...? I don't know... Wait, again? Yeah, uh, not again. Yeah, the, the whole pe city? The peasantry. Did you have to hurt anybody? Um, Are they, like, you didn't yeah, kill anybody? We had to run very fast. We ran very fast, and we did not really have to hurt anybody. Okay. Didn't That's really it. have to hurt anybody, but did you hurt somebody? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely. Make a deception all check. I just <laughs> did! <Yeah. laughs> I just did. Yeah, he seems pretty confident. He seems pretty. Oh no! Well, so Horn straight cat. just contradicts him and goes, "Absolutely, we did." <laughs> just still holding the like uh, a straight, just claim this yeah. all the fun. We're gonna <laughs> remember Horn just broken after that mission for a bit. We are not. We are not here to kill peasants. No, nope. I know. But if the citizens try to kill us... I did, uh, well, uh, subdue them! You're stronger than they are! Knock them out, man. Not when there's hundreds. Uh, Knock them all out. Hey, hey, we have something what? they don't have. A secret tunnel through the city. Secret tunnel? No, no, I don't... <laughs> I hear the song every time. Every time. I have no idea where it comes from. But you guys Atla. are like, every time. Okay, let's go. Uh, I gotta get ready. I'll be back, Marigold. And he runs up the stairs. I know where it's from. Avatar The Last Airbender. Exactly. Yes. I know where it's from. Well, Maya doesn't. Oh, oh, doesn't. I see. <laughs> But every time it's mentioned, you, it yep. has been sung, so he's like... <laughs> None of us know why we're saying it. It's just yeah, a little we feeling we get in yeah. our head. A little ear uh, Somebody really yeah, needs to write I'm... that down. <laughs> so Marigold would kind of speak up and go, I think I think Lithiath's right. Um, obviously, protect yourselves by any means necessary, but... If we can avoid hurting these citizens, they're they're being controlled against their will. We want to try to minima minimize casualties as as much as possible. As far we as those diban fox been go, that good at that lately. As, for yourself. as far as the diban order themselves go, if they are trained wielders of magic or or, or martial ability. Please, you know, use lethal force if necessary, at your discretion, but I, I trust all of your moral codes and, and judgments to to do the right thing here. Well, that's just darn toot and sweet, Marigold. He has like a thousand yard stare in his eyes for everything he's seen in the last like month he's been with this company. <laughs> <laughs> PTSD. <laughs> anyway, um... Everybody make sure you grab healing potions now. We gotta make sure we have those. Oh, perfect. I just stocked up. <laughs> yes. So, uh, if you guys would like to purchase anything in the store, healing potions, equipment, things of that nature, now is your chance to do so. I forgot I bought a lantern, because I'm tired of being in the dark. <laughs> you did buy a lantern. Uh, I don't have a greater healing potion so I need one of those that's 250 250 for a greater correct Tonkish. looking at something real quick sure take your time um, Oh man, it has to do something that would earn player inspiration. Um, I was gonna try to. I have one thing of diamonds. Do you, do any of you also have diamonds? 
No. Do you need money for diamonds? No. no. I only have three spell slots for that level, uh, but... Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't... Just mm, trying much. to get count of who, who It doesn't help change rest. my question. <laughs> that, that doesn't change my question. Do you need money for diamonds so that you can res people? Sure, you only have the ability to do so three times, but if you only have one diamond... I, I have enough gold. I'm trying to decide if I want to buy more diamonds. <laughs> okay. I don't plan on dying. Do you? I know. No, I've got someone I'm living for right now. Um, 50-50. So that's one. I have one res. Perfect. <laughs> I mean, I also have gentle repose if we really need it. As long as that we works. can carry bodies back. Does a shopping trip last as long as a short rest? <laughs> um, what are, you, what are you trying to accomplish? I'm trying to play with my companion to increase the bond strength. Um... <laughs> 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 Yeah, I, I'll say I'll say in the you know this is yeah. this is fair game in a session. Um, you can add one hour to play time. Okay, yeah, it's a uh, playing with companion short rest. Uh, I can play with my companion, and after three times, it increases the. Okay, yeah. So, so you yeah, can I just want to increase that while they one. shop. He's just over there like scratching the belly of his <laughs> thing on. <laughs> so cute. Alrighty, so after a time. You guys all reconvene. Marigold kind of still sitting there. Uh, kind of looking at the map. Looking at that spot where the eyeball was. Um, you can see as she knits, there's kind of this like nervous fidget to her. Um, you can see like she might not be sleeping the best either. Just kind of passive insight. Um, there's definitely sort of like a, an anxious fidget um, there. But she kind of looks towards Harper. Alright, Harper. Um, I'm... I'm okay with you guys trying this. I, I trust in your ability. Um, you have my blessing. And of course, if there is any sort of trouble, I'll try to be there. But um, I, I guess just be careful. Keep in mind the objectives. And um, I'll see you guys all in a little while, okay? Do we have any way of contact in Marigold? Does, does someone have like a whistle or something? I just yell really loud and people come running, so I'm, gonna I, assume, I'm going to assume that works. I mean, I looked at my proficiencies. I don't know if I have it in my actual inventory, but I am proficient with a war gong. Is that loud enough? <laughs> <laughs> I have thaumaturgy, so there's that. Mm -hmm. but... You have a uh, you have greater power than most of us. And uh, this this might be out of out of my range, but are you able to uh, cast? Uh, it was uh, what was the spell? I was reading about it the other day. Uh, contingency. You Should see, like go. Uh, I'll just, you could be notified. You see a look on her face of like. There's like a half a second of this like really youthful enthusiasm and excitement at your idea, which almost immediately you see kind of shatter into this like older, wiser, a um, little bit of heartbreak. And she kind of looks and goes, that's a really, really useful spell. Um, I I've seen it work miracles. It's, it's a great idea, Lithiath, but... Um, sadly, it is something, unfortunately, that I myself have never quite been able to do. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry. That is a clever idea, though. Ah, not a problem, Marigold. I understand. We all must know our limitations. <laughs> Let's just hope. It's, it's more of a... It's more arcane in nature than my wheelhouse, I suppose. Sorry. Yeah, kind of lifts his head and looks to Willow, and then doesn't say anything because he knows <laughs> the answer. But he's hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> eventually, eventually, one day, maybe. You all see, uh, uh, you all see, Clang trying to dress his uh, pangle with his old chain mail, and it doesn't work, so he just ties it to him like a cape. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, I can, you know, if we take that to Smith, he can get it refitted. Not now, of course, but mm -hmm. I'm sure that he'd love to make the parting. <laughs> uh, are you all ready? Let's light this puppy up! Yeah, going in, going uh, I'm gonna go. cast aid to, to start us up. Uh, myself, uh, Leth, and uh, Clay. Uh, Alright. Can I pop so, uh, mage armor too before we... Yep, yeah, absolutely. Oh. So, those of you who are aided, um, go ahead and give yourself five maximum hit points. Just be sure to mark that as temporary on your on your character sheet. Um, yeah, I'll put like parentheses your old total. Wait, what? You don't have to worry about it. Well, okay. You weren't aided. Cool. Alrighty. So with some preparatory spells cast, you guys are free to set out. So, All right. you guys exit through the secret tunnel, down through the wine cellar, out. Um, and as you pass through, you can see there appears to be a few. Um, crates and boxes down here that you haven't really seen before, but you don't really take too much mind of. Someone's cleaning or organizing or, or building something, no big deal. Um, but as you end up on the other side in this old abandoned shack in the cat's corner of Kadoria, um, kind of keeping a mental map of where you're going, you, you, um, sort of look for landmarks or street signs and start to head south. As you walk through the streets of Kadoria, um, you find yourselves kind of walking um, behind the piazza and eventually um, making your way towards. Make my way. Um, yes, you make your way towards Melora's Way, heading south, that sort of main street heading south. And on your left is Solomon's Slums. You can see this. Um, it's this really beautiful, eerie, haunting visage ahead of you, as on your left is this completely illuminated, um, site of normal Kadoria, and it's, looks to be maybe early afternoon, um, it's like a warm, sunner, sunny, <laughs> sunny summer day, and about halfway through the street, the light stops, and kind of spreading to your right is this horrible, nasty draining darkness that seems to almost like hungrily attack and these sort of like tendrils of, of shadow kind of lashing out at the light in this sort of threshold that you guys are walking down it's this really really trippy experience to just kind of be at that boundary between light and shadow in this in this moment you know the Forge. city Forge. what you were right we should have taken a walk in the slums it's nice ah, over it there. So beautiful. <laughs> I didn't know it was. It I didn't warm. know it was afternoon. They just. I don't even know what time. Oh my god. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Real quick. Do you do you think what will happen if you put that pearl in your ring? Gonna find out tonight, buddy. That's the plan. I'm more worried about what happens when I touch it. No oh boy. But we're going to find into a night dwarf or a night halfling forge buddy. Yeah, they're all related anyways. Sure, bud. No problem. <sighs> As you're walking, the city around you is eerily silent. You can hear the sound of your footsteps just pitter pattering against the the cobblestone streets here there's an ominous wind that sort of creaks and rocks in these old seemingly empty shells of buildings around you and you feel this sense of unease you feel this strange kind of like something's watching you feeling, but it's deeper than that. There's something not watching you, but there's something seeing you. And I would like 
everybody to make me a charisma saving throw, please. We're... Oh wait, no, I'm no, 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 I'm proficient in that. Me too. Uh, I have to ask because it actually does affect the pangolin. <laughs> um, oh no, you brought it with it. Um, I did bring it with me. Uh, is it something about being charmed? Because if it is, it has to roll with disadvantage. It is not a charm effect. Okay. Bruh. Oh, so, Luke, I left okay. the horse back. Is, is it a this fear is effect? Probably a stealth mission. It's not a fear effect. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just making. Doing my, good. Oh, doing my due diligence. Just brothers in arms, seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we both have a minus one to our charisma, me and oh. the companion. Mm -hmm. Clang and Harper, you guys feel this chill down your spine, and for some reason, your thoughts begin to sort of wander into these these darker memories, these sort of moments of shame or secrecy from your past. And no matter how hard you're like focused and you could sort of look over to the sunlight, you find yourself almost forcibly against your will looking closer to the shadow and really getting fixated on those negative thoughts. Mm, yeah, no, Harper. Not. Yeah. You find yourself muttering sort of almost... Yeah. A, a trauma response. Almost, you you can't quite shake it. You need to get these words out. Mm -hmm. Harper, what is one secret or lie or omission of truth that you have kept from the Tealeaf Adventuring Company so far? I was on a job and I abandoned my best friend. As Harper uh, kind of blurts this out. What? <laughs> you all what? sort of... Stop dead in your tracks, confused. I, uh. I have my, uh, Mace of Disruption out, and I kind of just hold it in front of Harper to illuminate him. Huh? His, huh? his face, the, the light, kind of like yeah. a torch. Luke, am I better? Like. Is it gone? Mm mm. mm, -mm. Hey, get, it, get it out of my face. Get it out of my face. It's, 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 uh, Harper, 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 Harper. It's. Mm -hmm. It's. Okay. <sighs> Those days are gone. Planked, you standing there kind of watching this stopping, you feel those same sort of negative compulsions to, to utter some sort of confession, some sort of secret, some sort of lie that you've been eating away at you. And as you begin to kind of unconsciously mutter out loud, what is one omission of truth or lie or scandal that Clang has had? Uh, you hear him talk for the first time, first of all. Like, not just his name. <laughs> Does he have a sophisticated voice? Just <laughs> no, he, still sounds, he's, he still sounds like Clang, but he's actually saying words. Uh, Clang, Clang ran from Clang ran from fight against Leader. Just like a hint of like an admission of fear compared to how brave he's been. Yeah. Forge does came. the same thing with the the light from the the mace in front of Clay to see try to figure out what's going on. It, like, is his eyes glazed over, or is he like just make a percept, make an investigation check for me, um, Forge? You, as you're observing these these random sort of outbursts from these two. You're sort of looking down for any signs of any sort of influence or possession or anything. And with your keen eye and, and maybe sort of your religious background, you notice behind both of them, um, in this sort of weird border between light and shadow, uh, that sunlight, that beautiful bright light of hope is casting a shadow. And you can see the shadow of both, actually of... Harper, of Clang, and of Pang are actually almost moving unnaturally, and they're almost, like, laughing. They're very, like, animatedly, like, cartoon, just, like, full belly hunched over laughing. And it is immediately, like, ugh, like, total chills, totally freaking you out. It is, it is bad juju. It's, 
their shadows are like moving on their own. Yes. Can I swing the mace of disruption down onto where their shadows are? So like kind of hit the ground. Smack yeah, you, the ground. You smack the ground. There's no response. It seems like you just hit the dirt and the shadow kind of gets disrupted by that little bit of light that the mace gives off, but it kind of, as you pull away, reforms and is still just laughing. Forge. Forge. I made a world with a, a deal with another worldly being. You, do you, do you see that? Okay. No. Uh, they're now they're shadows. Bad, they're they're moving the... on their own. They're I think they're possessed. Okay, I but ghost? I've never seen this before. I stole candy when I was twelve for my little brother. I don't That's just fucking rude, Harper. <laughs> uh, you, you guys were trying to be quiet. We have something to do. Um, I should you violence. see, you see, uh, uh, from an alleyway, around. from an alleyway in the uh, from the slums, out of the the light. Um, this little orange tabby cat kind of comes he's got like a little bite in his ear kind of comes and does a big cat stretch and sort of yawns and sort of like <laughs> trots along as a cute little kitten does um sort of seemingly like following the scent of something and kind of like just just purring you know happily as it heads towards clang and it sort of like comes up and nuzzles against clang's leg and starts to rub and purr and it kind of stops and sees the shadow laughing and immediately like halloween cat arched back hair on end just full Snarl just hisses at it and begins to kind of like trample off. Yeah. Okay. Are we done confessing? Harper's shake, else? nodding his head without opening his mouth. Perfect. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just like being like dragged away, it's just clean oh, stole food when people weren't looking. <laughs> it's just like from people's cavern tables. It's, I'm sure you needed it more, Clay. He's just before. just following, like pulling Pang with him by the tail. As you get to the outer wall of Kadoria, which sort of separates this district from the key itself, the gates are slightly ajar as if there's been some recent foot traffic i have a, a question when <laughs> the light from the the mace hit the shadow mm -hmm. did it affect this thing mm -hmm. at all did they seem like they came out of it a little bit and then went back into it or oh, it just all. nothing <laughs> It, it, it would be like a normal like interaction with a normal shadow. Okay. <laughs> Harper. Harper. Wait L for my L is, <laughs> yeah. Just like, let it out. Quietly. I push back out the boat. Okay. What? what? Let's fill out the spell. Who's Phil? Harper. You guys, we're not. This isn't <sighs> our focus right now. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Whatever you did, I forgive you. I need you to be here in like Forge. all of the time, please. Forge looks for an apple or an orange or something. There's nothing around unless you happen to be carrying one, which I doubt you are. <laughs> but as you step down this 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 threshold, kind of the stairs leading down into this sort of lower district, I need everyone to make a perception check. Disadvantage, because I'm trying to keep this from opening up. Okay, hold up. I gotta find my sheet, because I've misplaced it. Perception. Uh, I'm not great at this. I have a, uh, a rations. <laughs> Would I be able to make something out of that with rope and make a gag for Harper? If Harper is willing to be gagged, <laughs> you can allow it. But note <laughs> that that will affect spellcast. That's a I mean, like... that's a question. That's a statement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sorry. I'm no. just checking like two. Oh no, that's the minute. 
Do you have any silent mm-hmm. casting? So, uh, you said as you guys... Check. Yes. Please. I'll let him do it. I'll let him do it. Uh, and I tell him once we get into combat, he can cut it off, but we have to be as quiet as possible. <laughs> as you guys are standing and tying a gag in the middle of the street, actually Pang <laughs> kind of nuzzles up against your, your leg, Clang. And kind of, and in in almost like a dog-like way, kind of does a point gesture further to the south, and, and it causes you to sort of look. And Clang, what you notice is, um, a few hundred yards away, kind of further at the actual like coastline where there are docks and wharfs and boats, you can see. It's it's hard to hard to describe, but it's almost like as if you were looking at like a street light, right? Where like there is surrounding darkness, and then you can see a light source that is emitting light and fighting back the darkness. Except this is the opposite. This is sort of like there's ambient darkness around you that you can kind of sort of see through with your dark vision and sort of these like gray tone colors. But there is something imperceptible because is the center almost either absorbing light or emitting darkness if that's even possible and you kind of have this weird discussion of physics and light and particles and waves in your brain but it doesn't make sense it seems to almost defy standard physics and reality there's this source of permeating darkness yeah clang has a modifier intelligence of a plus zero so he has no idea what's happening right now yeah (laughs) Um, but he knows that that is not normal so So what are you going to do about it? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's still uh, I really don't think freak, like kind of freaking out and mumbling to himself, but he like he, yeah, you taps can, you on Forge's leg and yeah. he taps on like Forge's leg and points. Forge finishes tying off the, the ball gag, food gag, whatever. A little too tight, but uh, turns and goes, what? Like a panicky, like patting of the leg and pointing. <laughs> he he looks down, sees Clayne pointing out, and looks up. Uh, what does Forge notice? Forge doesn't have dark vision. He's just using whatever light he comes from his mace right now. Yeah, you see darkness too. Point, you see darkness <laughs> too, but it's like <laughs> advanced darkness. Like Ooh, no, even no in light this, us, like see anything through that. Um, if it was pointed out to you, now that now that kind of the party's been made aware, Willow, you look further out and you kind of see that same thing. It's like uh, there is a, an emanating source of darkness that's darker than the surrounding darkness, if that makes mm-hmm. any sense. It's like there's okay. like there's like black, like a black like, hole. Kind of, yeah. Kind of vibe, right? Like just like the center is pitch black and like Yes. Okay. Yes. And God. Willow, with your keen elven eyes. You swear in that blackest of black darkness, you see the silhouettes of this almost leathery bat-like wing kind of flap oh, Lord. and intersect that darkness. Oh, Lord. Come. Okay. The, uh, so with the mace, it's 20 bright light, 20... Yeah, depth. this is this is several is hundred right yards the, away. This is, is several hundred yards away. Is the darkness starting at the end of the bright light, or is it... Yes, there's no dim light. And dim. So... And is that any weirder from the other two times we've dealt with this darkness? Anything? It's just no, it's that same darkness. No, it's pretty standard. Yeah, it, it's it seems like the, the the darkness is actively fighting against light sources right now. Um, I'm gonna point out that there's something batty. There's guys. There's something batty coming in from the darkness over there. <laughs> Do they know we're here? I can't tell. But there's definitely a creature. You all hear I have a crush on Willow. Uh, but I knew that, Harper. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Forge you takes all the, hear... the rope and ties it again. <laughs> dung, 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 dung. Just this repeated song. Absolutely and I'm going to drag us to the first <laughs> map. As you sort of instinctually panic. What do you guys do as you hear this 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 bell, almost like a like a um like a um, wharf bell? Um, what do you guys do? Um, can I, I 
Oh, Forge Mirror was Edge. waiting until combat started. Uh, he's going to cast Daylight onto his shield so we can actually see. Okay. Lang's going to uh, mimic the sound, hitting his shield with his uh, sword sheath as okay. his uh, war gong proficiency. Uh, so with, the uh, with Daylight, how much light does that omit? 60 foot. 60 foot, okay. Uh, 60 foot bright, 60 foot dim, but if there's no okay. dim, then... There's no dim. Okay. You guys rush, uh, casting a few spells, rushing down further into the the key, into this district. I'm pull, I'm I'm pulling up my uh, echo. Okay, you've got yes. your echo. As soon as we get down there, can I cast dancing lights? Sure. Around your dancing lights, lights are actually snuffed out as you cast them, <gasps> but they're within daylight. Then Does they're not matter? providing any effect at all. Yeah, it's yeah. it's yeah, unfortunately this okay. is a permeating permeating right. environmental Worth effect. A shot. You guys rush down, casting your round of preparatory spells. I'm gonna move you guys to this map as you kind of Ooh. find yourselves in the key, and I'm gonna say everybody go ahead and roll initiative. I get a token for my thing. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> Should be set up on the stat block. Yep. Ayo. Pingy, did you click on your character? I guess not. But I rolled a four. There's Pang. There's a 15. Alright, uh, Pang. Right. Let me... Luke, do you want me to... Roll yeah, if you don't, if that. you don't mind, if you can roll That's again, fine. and I'll just change it to the the four. I get a control over Pang. For the you have That's it. two ones in a row. Not letting me select his uh, token. One second. Uh, I Not thought I had it set three. up right. I'm sorry. Yeah, it should be. It should be this set one? up right. So it can be can be edited and controlled by. All right, let me. Let me try reloading. Let me try dragging the uh, sheet over. One second. See if, see. I got you. I got you. Here we go. You should be able to do it now. Yes, I can. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay. So as you guys roll initiative, um, oh my god, How I would like. Oh my god. How that is the first uh-huh. negative one I've ever seen in my time playing five e. <laughs> I would like you guys to take a moment and discuss sort of uh, team instinct as I roll a shitload of initiatives. Oh god. Forge um, is gonna get up on a roof and provide intel to start. Uh, because... You, you are not... You are in initiative right now, so you cannot move. Uh, I know, but that's the plan. That's okay. plan? It, it, Forge is gonna see what we're dealing with from the rooftop. Uh, with that, it is gonna try and keep his casters alive. Uh... The clang and bang are going to try to be the distractions. <laughs> and I started blasting! <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> Harper flies up 20 feet in the air. Yes! And blast rains and fire blast. Out. God. Anyway, we started swipe. Anyway, we started swiping. <laughs> so. Forge and Harper are going to be a well-oiled machine. Forge is just going to point to different areas from the rooftop. and Harper's just... I have never seen a negative one on initiative. That hurts. <laughs> we got you. We've got you. And I've got you, babe. <laughs> All right. I think I've got everybody. So, at the start of the initiative, you all hear this wicked controlling, dominant, raspy tenor voice just cackling, and you hear the flapping of wings as, although none of you can see it, there is a guest here who with, yeah, they've got plenty of dark vision, um, <laughs> oh, will... No shout out in this commanding voice in Infernal, which if you speak Infernal, you can understand. Our guests of honor have arrived. I don't know what you're saying. Show the Daiban Order your loyalty. Feast on their wealth. 
feast on their affluence, feast on their joy. Um, and that will be his turn. You hear other smaller voices kind of cackling, laughing, and sort of flying up um, are two individuals. Uh, these sort of smaller, spined, almost bat-like creatures uh, with these beady red eyes are going to flow up, fly up, and they are going to make two attacks each. So we're going to do two at Willow and two at Forge. Uh, so Willow, that's a 16 yep. to hit. That's my AC, baby. All right, so that's going to be four points of piercing plus two points of fire. Going to intercept. Okay, go ahead and intercept. Uh, hold up, I think it's a D10 plus my fighter level. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. All right, so as this projectile comes instinctually, you bat it out of the air. Uh, Willow, you can set take zero damage. Um, the second attack Thank misses. Um, two against Forge, same round of attacks. Um, that's going to be a 20, which just bounces off the armor, and a 6, which is a miss. Um, that's going to bring us to this particular creature, who is going to get right in on it. Um, you hear another deeper infernal voice, um, kind of shouting, Finally! I've been so bored. This is going to be quite enjoyable. Uh, and that'll bring us to Forge. I'm going to throw on my Christmas hat and get up on uh, this roof right next to me. Uh, how tall of a, a climb is that? Um, Probably about 20 feet. So I can just about... Can I, uh, is this on top of the roof or is this inside that I can see if I go on there uh you're gonna i can't do layers of dynamic lighting so you're just gonna be inside so if you wanted to climb on top of the roof probably like right next to this thing is is probably your best bet like right here ish okay so i don't know if there's a way you want to mark me 20 feet up or whatever just for prosperity's sake um so uh, Forge is going to start pointing out where things are, uh, and then now that I can see things, I am going to I'm going to pop a Spirit Guardians. Okay. And I don't know if I catch that guy on top there. It's a 15-foot sphere. Okay, yep. Um, And then I'm going to drop my spiritual weapon on that guy as well. Uh, Which one? Uh, The one below me. Can you just, just ping it? There's like 17 million tokens, sorry. Okay. Um, I like that you put the names there, but it's very hard to find what I need to find. There we go. Okay. Oh, sorry. It's okay. There we go. We're good. We're good. I'll get used to it. Okay. So the 20 is going to hit uh, for six points of force damage on that guy. Nice shot. Alrighty. And is the other guy in my spirit guardians at all? Uh, yes, but I did look, and that does only affect um, on the start of their turn. You don't get it as okay. you cast it. Yeah. Gotcha. I did look into that, because that's it's an incredibly powerful spell if that happens. You're basically like double-ticking every turn. Um, yeah. Okie dokie. So that's Forge's turn. All set? And he calls out uh, like the locations, like, big guys all the way down in the dock. Mm-hmm. Oh, goody. Mm-hmm. All righty, that'll bring us to Harper. Harper, uh, I gave you your your lantern. I assume it was lit the whole time. Oh yeah. Okay. Like the thing that it's on a hook on my waist, you know. Okay. All right, I am going to pop a bonus action and use elemental gifts to give myself a fly speed, just in case, because okay. I'm not going to leave the ground yet. 
Um, that's um, one of my actions. And now I would like to move through Lathias, through Willow, take this spot here, and blast the first thing I see. Because that's the safest thing for me to do at the moment. Okay. Lay down covering fire. All right, rolling. That's a nine. Uh, nine is going to be a miss. And rolling again. 25 will hit. That'll do it. 12 plus For three. Two. Okay, these guys... Um, I hate it when character sheets break. Um, so these guys are resistant to cold damage. So that is going to be 12 plus two will be 14 points. Okay, okay, fair enough. Alrighty. Uh, Anything else? No. Great, that's all my spells. <laughs> Alrighty. That'll bring us to Clang. Just want to shield in one hand, sword in the other, take a deep breath, and then just start screaming as he charges this guy. <laughs> Alrighty. I think I'm over Riptide, but I can probably... That's okay. It's good. 5, 10, 15, 20. Oh, okay, I think you're right here, Wolf. Sure. I'm not perfectly lined up with this map, so... Yeah, the, the grid is a little bit off. Okay, uh, bonus action. Uh, Draconic Cry. Okay. We're screaming. Uh, everything te within 10 feet of me, me and allies have advantage on attack rolls against the enemies that can hear me. So okay. hopefully this guy in the front. Then I will use my... Two, I'll use my action to swing twice with the Meteorite Sword. Alrighty. Okay, 22. 22 will definitely hit. And second attack, just to... Uh, a 13. 13 also just hits. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, 10 from the first, and 9 from the second. Solid damage, very nice. Uh, Yeah, feeling froggy, we're going to go with an action surge. Oh, let's go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, actually, uh... You're at advantage yeah, anyway, yeah. Yeah, 24, yeah. so yeah, that would've... Mm -hmm. Okay. I can learn how to play a fighter. It's not this complicated class. <laughs> uh, an 18. 18 will hit. And, and a 16. 16. Will hit. Yeah. Okay, another 10. Another 9. Another 18. Big damage. All right. Coming out strong. Uh, uh I will... Was that? That's piercing. Um, I don't think it was changed on here. Did we say that the meteorite sword can be with slashing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Then I'll, yep. I'm going to use my uh, reduce speed for the slasher feat. Okay. Uh, hit it with an attack. Uh, reduce its speed by ten by ten feet until the start of my next turn. All right. I like it. Uh, and that will be it for Clang. Okay. Uh, these guys are going to retaliate. Um, these horrible purple-skinned, devilish-like creatures with these nasty barbed beards wielding these like horrible hooked glaives are going to rush up um, with a 10-foot reach. Uh, this first one is going to attack you, Clang. Uh, they're going to get... Um, actually, they're going to get right up on you. Um... We're going to make two attacks. The first attack is going to be um, with the Glaive. That's going to be a 20 to hit. Just hits. <laughs> Just hits. That's going to be 13 points of slashing damage. And I need you to make me a constitution saving throw. Okay. Did they enter into Spirit Guardians? They did. Thank you. Um, so they're both going to have to make wisdom saving throws. Uh, the first one is a 20, the second one is an 18. So both of them are going to succeed on the save, but they will take half damage. Thank you for that reminder. I hate to be that person, but aren't you 20 feet in the air? If they're taller than 5 feet, though. It depends on how he wants to count the sphere, how it's going to be coming down. Like, did they Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a three-dimensional sphere. They're, they're just on the edge of it. Um, okay. So like, yeah, did they have to run through it to, to get to that spot yeah. is the question. So that's going to be six points of radiant damage on each of them. And I okay. am going to roll my 
Constitution saving throw. A 14. Uh, 14 is a save. Um, so the just the um, sorry, just the 13 points of slashing damage on that attack, and then the beard is going to come at you with a 12. That'll miss. Um, the other one's going to do the same round of attacks. We're going to go with the glaive first, which is an 18 to hit, which is a miss. Yes. And then the beard is going to be a 7 to hit. That's also a miss. That'll be their turn. It's like the first real hit Clang's taken in the last few sessions. Yeah. Um, that'll end their turn. Did I have only two of them? I believe just the two. Okay. I hope there's only two. <laughs> That's going to bring us to this one, who kind of clambers over onto the front of this boat. Um, and... He is going to... He's going to look over at Forge up there on the roof. Um, and he's got this, like, long, sort of bony... Almost like a, a grappling hook or like a like a, a gaff, like a harpoon. That's the word I'm thinking of. He's going to line it up and throw this hooked pole arm right at you, Clang. So he looks at me and throws a clank. I, I I'm mean, sorry. I'm sorry, Forge. <laughs> okay. All you <laughs> tanks like... are the same. All these targets I can't <laughs> hit with my attacks. Um, <laughs> you feel the rush of air as this giant harpoon comes rushing past you, kind of like glancing off your shield and armor and sort of like latches onto the rooftop. And you sense the impact that this thing just pierces through the roof. And you're like, holy fuck that's gonna hurt and then as a bonus action he's going to yank that and it tears a chunk of the roof off with it and just kind of drags back to him where he catches it uh forge i need a dexterity saving throw as he is destroying the building that you're standing on that's fun with a 13 you whoa follow and lose your balance and fall 20 feet um, you are going to take, um, wow, 11 points of fall damage, which is kind of insane. Um, but you land on your feet. You kind of like bang your knee on the way down, but you are, you are not prone. Ow. So you are now at ground level. It just kind of waves to you. <laughs> like in the middle of combat, just, hey, friend. <laughs> Alrighty. You hear the sound of screaming and chanting as dozens of the citizens of Kadoria come rushing at you from all angles. Um, these two, as they rush into the Spirit Guardians, just expire. You see these ones Oops. rushing forward. Um, out of every window they can find, rushing forward. These ones stopping here. This one rushing up there. These ones coming out. And in just a flurry of pathetic attacks, um, Forge, you feel like a few like rocks and like seashells kind of just bouncing off your armor. Um, let's see, Harper and Willow. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven attacks. Um, Willa, one of them manages to just, in this, like, just underworld, almost zombie-like, you get scratched for two points of damage. Harper's um, 20 feet in the air. No, Harper is flying. I am on, yeah. I'm ground level right now. Oh, you're ground level? Yep. Yep. I only see... Uh, do some of them have multiple attack? No, there, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them near you, Willow. Some are throwing stuff. Yeah, some are just picking up like hunks of okay. wood or rocks or okay. beer bottles or whatever and just hucking them at you guys. So um, how much damage did you set up? Uh, you take two points of damage there. Okay. Um, let's see. Clang. That's a miss. That's a miss. That's a miss. That's a miss. Um, Harper. Oh, God. What the fucking mirror images. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, for mob rolls, you want to say nothing hits? <laughs> Um, 
Two of them are gonna go. And what's the what's the clone's AC? Uh, um, Seventeen. I think it's. <clears throat> Let me double check. Uh, not the. I, I mean the mirror image. Sorry, not the. Yeah, uh, not the okay. Uh, I was. Okay. I also got confused there, but that's okay. My um, bad. Uh, image. ten plus dex. Ten plus dex. Okay. So does a thirteen hit? Ten plus dex against. Is... Yeah. What's what's your dex heart? Uh, thirteen will hit, I believe. All right. So one of the one of the mirror images is dispelled by the commoners. Okay. Okay. Uh, that that'll bring us to Willow. Oh God. Okay. Um. At a quick glance, these people all seem to be wearing kind of just like dark, almost like dyed gray wool travelers' cloaks. Um, but they appear to be, for the most part, not armored, not um, you know, they're armed with very, very crude weapons like rocks, sticks. Um, one of them might have like a kitchen knife, like stuff like that. These are these are not. Very clearly not trained members of the Divan Order. These Can are the I tell if they're like under some kind of spell? Um immediately yes. You 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 Okay. Immediately get the sense that these are bewitched commoners. You said they're wearing wool? Yeah, I mean they're in like all sorts of like various I mean, like, like just like, common clothing. Yeah, uh, a lot of them seem to have those like catches fire easily, and I don't well, know if that would throw them. No, scary. not to kill them. <laughs> to just like I've if it would disrupt felt. their s- the spell enough because they're so caught off guard by their capes catching fire. Not if them. you fireball them, they will die. I don't want to fireball them. I'm just saying. I'm just saying too, man. I'm working out some because I have shit spells that help in this right now in any other way he's just asking um, questions in a damaging way. i'm getting i'm collecting information mm-hmm. formulating ideas just asking doesn't questions. mean they're great ones <laughs> forge what did we learn in magic school it's an um, old okay. mission so, there's clearly a building right here is there a window yes. in this building um they are all boarded up fuck their window <laughs> um, there's, there's a couple of doorways. You see, there's a doorway right here and a doorway right here. I don't care about doorways. They're beyond me now. <laughs> um. <laughs> um, I was in yeah, a raw of so... a statement as it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I have a question, Luke. Yeah. This is hypothetical at the moment. Okay. What if I cast Wall of Fire along the building? along the dock like straight out on the side of the building like like kind of like the building's like wood yes the buildings are are timber um you're gonna you're gonna fry a whole lot of people how would i fry that like it's only how thick is the wall the edge of the well wait 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 wait. it's evocation right i can Mm -hmm. save the two Right? Do they have to be my buddies? No, you can declare who you're saving. Yeah, so what if I like just work it around those two that are standing directly in So the way Wall of Fire works is that it has a hot side and a cold side, so depending on what what side you put, you will be frying like everyone in in this row as well. Are they that weak? They're commoners. Yeah. God damn. Just want like a small little campfire. My wall of fire is too strong. <laughs> <laughs> I want a small little campfire. I'm gonna use a fourth level spell. <laughs> but but a campfire that's like just like big and long, you know, like a the big big, long big hug, like a big big hug. I don't know. Okay, let's. All right, see. what are you doing, Willow? I don't fucking know, man. Um, <laughs> this is so sad. Fuck, man. I didn't bring the good thing. Uh, yeah, I guess. Ooh, up to six creatures. Fuck it. Let's cast slow. Um, on the four in front of me, plus the two, the, the, that purple guy, and one more villager. So what's the range on slow? Uh, 120 feet. feet. 120 feet in a 40-foot cube with it. 40-foot cube. Wow. Okay. 
up to six creatures. That's massive. So just the closest six. Okay. That so one, two, three, four. Two. Yeah. Okay. So all of the commoners are slowed. Bless you. Thank you. I gotta read. You all there. Uh, wisdom saving throw or be affected by the. Oh, so yeah. I guess they're dumb too. Yeah, they are slowed. The the devil there is going to make a wisdom saving throw at advantage. Yeah. Um, let's see. That's a that's a twelve. So he is also slowed. Hell yeah. Okay. So that affected all six targets. Speed Sick. target speed is halved. It takes a negative two penalty to AC and dexterity saving throws. Can't use reactions. All right. And Last then it turn. only gets one. Yeah, it can either action or bonus action, not both. Okay. A couple other things, but yeah. Okay. All right, that's it. That's all I got. Alrighty, that'll bring us to Lithia. All right, uh, we're gonna go over here, twenty-five feet, because I can stand under. Oh, is it thirty? Thirty would be right there. Yeah. All right. Uh. Because I can do that. I'm going to attack this guy twice with Aomi. Oh, hold up. I'm on the wrong sheet. Why am I on the wrong sheet? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. 16 for 13. 16. As you come out, you slash with a wide arc. And uh, is that a... It's a silvered longsword, but is it it's magical? Silvered? I don't know. N- no. It's just silvered. Actually, for these guys, silvered weapons cut it. So, that Perfect. is enough to uh, end that guy. Alright. And then the second attack is going to go to the other one in front of me. Okay, 16 will also hit for another 8. Alright. Nice. And then as a bonus action I am going to swap places with my echo and the echo is going to disappear because it's more than 30 feet away from me okay okay I like it and my turn alrighty and last but not least little pang so was uh, this purple guy right here on the roof or on the ground uh, he's actually flying sort of about 20 feet up in the air next to that, like, broken hunk of roof. Okay. Uh, well, oh. hey, look, uh, are you with this diagonal line be enough to have the echo stay? It's technically within 30 feet of you, yeah. Yeah, so then the echo's still there. Okay, perfect. So he's going to move there, and then a uh, defensive barrier. It's going to select... Uh, one small creature, uh, one medium, or up to two small, one small for a clang. Okay. Or actually, no, so I'm target the one. I'm gonna hit, uh, Forge with it. Okay. Uh, well, on, it's a defensive, it's, until the start of Peng's next turn, uh, Forge is benefiting from half cover, which is a plus two to AC. Nice, very cool. I, I really don't need it. <laughs> Take it! <laughs> Well, Pang does not know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pang is just a little friendly guy. He's just trying to help. He's doing his best. All right, guys. We are still in initiative. So I don't want you to touch or move anything. But it is 8 o'clock. This is going to be a long fight. There's a lot going on here. I think now is a good time for us players to take a quick break. No short rest for the characters. But we are going to take a quick bathroom break, get some drinks, refresh, kind of re-strategize come in here with a game plan and kick some ass. So guys, um, we're going to be right back. Give us like about eight to ten minutes or so. Um, Please stick around. Uh, This is a lot of hype. There's a lot going on. This is going to be real dangerous combat. Um, And please know that your view matters and that at the end of this, you're going to get to vote on who you think did the most awesome job and they're going to get a bonus two leaf point. So please stick around. We'll see you in just a little while. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, you good. (sighs) Guys. Uh, I have a plan too. Oh, kill the casters.
Welcome back. Thank you guys for joining us and uh, sticking around through that little short rest. We are still right back in combat trying to figure out 
what the heck's going on? We had some scheming during this this break. We had some planning. Let's see if they can pull it off. So, diving right back in, top of the initiative. Um, Forge, from out of the darkness, you do not see these attacks coming at you, so they have advantage. However, you are benefiting from half cover, so you have plus two to your AC. Okay. That makes it a 27. 27. So, keep that Three... Mind. Balls of flame come flying out of the shadows in your direction. Uh, at advantage, let's go. Mm. He's prone, isn't he? And I have Can I counter spell that? To fire. Or is that? Am I out of range for that? Uh, number Actually, one, yeah, right. you can't me. see it. Yeah. Ignore me. Sorry. And number two, it's not a spell. No. Um, okay, but, but if it's a ranged attack, is it still at a disadvantage from him being prone? He is explicitly I'm not prone. I'm standing. Not prone. Yeah. He, he said I landed on my feet. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I missed that. All right, so the first one's a 22 to hit. That's a miss. The second one is a 26 to hit. That's still a miss. Oh. And the third one is a 25 to hit. All three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, You kind of feel that, like, that rush of warmth coming, and you just hear this, uh, this deep, guttural laugh. That'll be his turn. Um, did I cover help? It did. It, did, yeah, it, did. it saved him from two hits. <laughs> yeah. <You're welcome. laughs> All right. At the start of this turn, um, this little spine devil is starting its turn in the spirit guardian, so it's going to make a wisdom saving throw at advantage. Uh, that's a 20, so he's going to take half damage. Uh, so he will take eight points of radiant damage. Um, he's going to fly right out of there. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 right there. Opportunity um, attack or no? Uh, he has an ability called flyby. Okay. Um, so he does not provoke opportunity attacks. Um, so that was 30 feet of movement just to get right there. So he is going to unleash his three attacks on you, uh, Forge. So, three quick little attacks. Uh, 22, 19, and 14. All three will miss. Uh, this one is slowed. It's going to shoot out at Willow. It only gets one of these attacks, correct? Because it's slowed? Yes, sorry. It's okay. Um, mm -hmm. It can't yeah, make can more than one. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to make the one... Tail spine attack at Willow. Excuse me, hiccups. Um, that's going to be an eight on Willow, which is a miss. Um, this one's going to fly up forty feet, and it's got range on that. These two are going to kind of fly. Actually, what's the range on these attacks? My bad. Um, he's got to fly up a little further. He's got to fly up a little further. They're kind of like dancing and toyfully playing around the edge of the spirit guardians uh so we've got three let's see three attacks six attacks six attacks against clang okay um 23 oh yep that's on it all right that's gonna be five points of piercing plus six of fire on the first attack 11. second attack is a 12 that's a miss Third attack is a six. That's a miss. Fourth attack is a 19. I believe that's a miss. Yep, it's a 20 AC. So. Okay. 20 will hit for another seven points. I'm going to negate the with interception. Okay. Yep. So scratch the seven there. And the last one's also a hit for eight. So it's going to be eight plus 11. So 19 points of damage there. We've got three more against Clang coming in hot. Or sorry, I keep Forge. getting you guys confused. Forge. Uh, 12, a 6, and a 20 is going to be a miss. That's it Just for... Just two hunks of metal in the middle of the map. Seriously, that's it for those guys. Um, this Ice Devil is going to... Hmm. Wang's in danger. (laughs) 
Sorry. Uh, the ice devil is going to huck an ice spear at Forge. Um, so let's see. That's going to be just the one attack. Um, that's going to be a 29 to hit. Holy moly. That hits. Okay, so that's going to be 13 points of piercing plus 11 points of cold. Uh, one sec. I have the heavy armor master, so does that subtract the two? Mm -hmm. Or no? Mm -hmm. Or reduce by three. So yep. what was it again? So it's instead of 13, it'll be 10 points of piercing plus 11 of cold. And then I need a concentration check, first of all, on spirit guardians. Is that a uh, constitution check or a save? Save. All right, so you're good on spirit guardians. And then I need another constitution saving throw because of the effect of the ice spear. That's also a save. Okay, so cool. you're good. All righty, that'll be his full action. That'll bring us to Forge. Fucking hurt. Uh, Forge is going to move to the other side of this. See where those attacks came from. He can see big wing dude that threw some fire at him earlier. Mm -hmm. And let me check something. Forge is going to take out the staff of swarming insects. Uh, okay. instead of his uh, Mace of Disruption. Okay. And he's going to Insect Plague right in between those two guys. Okay. That's the uh, the info for it. It's a 20-foot sphere. I'm just going to place okay. it right in between so it hits the uh, guy with the wings and the, the guy who just hugged an ice thing at me. Okay, so 20-foot sphere... And that drops Spirit Guardians, because it's a uh, concentration. Okay. Uh, so, like, right here? Where do, you, where do you want to put it? Uh, if we can catch all three of the big guys, that would be perfect. And then, actually, sure. right there is perfect. Doesn't hit any there of the, uh, those. Uh, so they need to make a constitution save and throw against my DC, which I think 14, for half damage. Okay. Um, so stand by. That's 26 points of piercing. So the Bone Devil is going to make a constitution save, you said? Yep. DC 14 okay. constitution. Uh, the sure Bone Devil ask. saves. The Bone Devil saves, so he's going to take half of that. will be 13 points yep. of piercing. The Ice Devil is going to make a con save at advantage. Is a 26, so he will also take 13. And the Horned Devil is going to make a con save. Add advantage is a natural 20, so he will also take 13. Okay. And then, bonus action, I'm going to drink my greater potion of healing. Okay. Ugh. For 12 points. Okay. So the area is difficult terrain. It is lightly obscured. Okay. Good to know. Delilah is being such a little lap cat right now. I feel like Dr. Evil. She's right here with me. Being a cutie. Uh, did the other little guy also... I'm so sorry. His... Spine Devil is going to make a con save. Add advantage. Uh, is going to be a natural 20 as well. So he will take 13. Stop rolling so good. <laughs> Alrighty. So that was your action. Your bonus action was to drink the potion. Any movement? Uh, I already I moved okay. to the other side of that that guy. Uh, when he threw that thing, would I still have half cover? Uh, you did still yeah. have half cover, yes, but it was a twenty nine to hit. Okay. Yeah. I I didn't catch that. I don't no. do so much okay. with a <laughs> pink <Thanks for> Yeah. <laughs> Useless cover and not. <laughs> uh, yeah, that ends my turn. Uh, yeah, that ends my turn. Okay. Use my bonus action um, already. You are no longer on the roof, so let me get rid of that. Okay, that'll bring us to Happy Peace Whittington. You are muted, good sir. Hop is going up in the air 20 feet. He's taking the attacks of opportunities. Okay, so that'll be two attacks of opportunity. Um, 
both of them are gonna miss. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, mm-hmm. Now that I am 20 feet in the air, I am going to glide over this building here. Okay. So I'm gonna 20, 30. Um, can I still see this one that's slowed? Uh, From this angle. If you're going... If you're going up on the roof, sure, yeah. Okay, so I am going yep. to use my action to commit an Eldritch Blast. Okay. I do not know where this accent has come from. Don't ask me. First one. An oh. 11 is a miss. 21! Actually, I'm sorry. They have minus 2 to their AC. Because of slow. So an 11 does hit. Okay, first damage. 11 with 3 of the cold... And All right. four on its own. So the second one is enough to take it out. That's what I thought. <laughs> you folded faster than when Grandmama went on vacation. <laughs> Alrighty, anything else for Harper? I didn't mean to say that. Bye. <laughs> Alrighty, that'll bring us to Clang. Right, uh, he desperately needs to use his second wind first, so... Okay. I feel that. Uh, 12 HP. Good roll. Brings me up to 18. Fuck. Kling <laughs> is not having a, a good session with those hits. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was 18 before my potion, too. <laughs> uh, and then he's going to do his... Uh, Attack action on the devil stall in front of him. Okay. First first attack. A fifteen. Uh fifteen will hit. Seven, seven piercing. Slashing. There you go. Or slashing, yeah. Yep. Uh he's still standing. Yeah, he's still up. Second attack. Seventeen's. Seventeen's good. Eleven. Another eleven. Alright. Chipping away at it, chipping away. Doing pretty solid damage there. Uh, that is action, bonus action. Yep, that'll be it. Alrighty, that'll bring us to this one bearded devil left. He is going toe to toe with you, Clang, so he's going to make his two attacks. Yep. Uh, the first one is going to be a glaive attack, which is an 18, that's a miss, and then the beard attack is going to be a 23. That will hit. So that'll just nick you for three points of piercing damage, but I do need a constitution saving throw. And let me... Constitution saving throw. A6. All right, you are poisoned with this infernal poison. And so, while poisoned, you have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. And in addition to that effect, while poisoned in this way, you cannot regain hit points. Uh Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, you said uh, you also can, is three damage flat? Three damage flat, yep. Okay. You can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of your turns. Um, so poison, disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls? And attack rolls, correct. Okay, and then I can't regain hit points? You can't regain hit points, yes. Okay, yep. Poison oh. condition. Alrighty. That'll be it for him. Uh, that'll bring us to this bone devil who is standing in the bug of insects. Not a big fan of that. So he's going to leap right out, kind of landing, uh, teetering on this boat and halfway onto this like small little like merchant stand, kind of crushing it under his weight, kind of like fluctuating for a little bit That's as funny. he just looks at you with this wicked, horrible grin and these glowing embers of eyes. He's going to unleash a full round of attacks on you, Forge. It's nice knowing you guys. <laughs> um, so we've got one claw and one sting. Uh, so the claw attack is going to be a 16 to hit. That will miss. And the sting is going to be a 27 to hit. It hits. Well, so, yeah, either way it hits. So, yeah. So as the claw comes out, you manage to raise the shield and block it. As he kind of continues that momentum, this hooked barb-like tail comes out. That's going to be 11 points of piercing, minus 3 is 8, plus 13 poison. I have resistance to poison. Okay, so half of the poison damage will be 6. So 8 plus 6 is 14 points of damage total. 
and I need you to make me a constitution saving saving throw. 20 will save. You are not poisoned. Ow. But he is in it with you. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. Now we've got the commoners. Um, these ones are going to move in and swarm on Willow. Um, that's four attacks against Willow. Willow, you're going to take one point of damage as one of them picks up like a broken piece of glass and throws you. Kind of get like a cut across your cheek. Um, these ones are going to move. Does that trigger a check? Uh, you're not concentrating on anything. Flow is a concentration spell. You're right. So that would, uh, you, I don't think, yeah, actually you would need to I also had to, uh, con. You're right. Yes. Thank you. So is that So Forge, you're good. Uh, so constitution saving throw for Willow. Is that just like, I don't, uh, you said saving throw, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're, you still got, so well, excuse me, I shouldn't eat. Um, so we've got one, two, three. Couple more misses against Harper. That's okay. Um, we've got um, a miss against Forge, a miss against Clang, a miss against the Echo. These ones are going to move up. They're just coming in like rats out of the woodwork. Alrighty. Um, we've got a couple more attacks against Forge. They're like incapable of actually hitting Forge. Alrighty, that'll bring us to Willow. Okay. Um, can I climb up into the top of the building? Uh, you can certainly try. You're going to take three opportunity attacks, and no, you're I don't. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're you're fine with opportunity attacks. Yeah, um, kind of just like Assassin's Creed style, just climbing up there. Um, three opportunity attacks. All three are gonna miss. Uh, so you can basically get most of the way up this turn. Actually, you're a wood elf, so you would have just enough with your last five feet of movement to kind of like just get over the edge. So am I like where Harper is? More like? Yeah, you're you're pretty much like okay. there and there. Yeah. Oh boy. That's- but I'm on the roof, so I can You're see on the roof. Yeah. farther. Yes. I move. That was my movement. Um. Okay. And everyone can see because of the daylight, the, the edge of that guy. So, except, okay. Would they be able to see through the the bugs? How is that? Uh, the bugs are lightly obscured. So they can kind of see him. Yeah. Okay, and then just... I always get confused with concentration. I can only cast one concentration spell at a time, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um... So, yeah. Oh... What did I to do? Why are these all concentration? Oh... Welcome to the life of a wizard. Fuck... <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so I would like to cast. Fuck it, we're gonna cast. No. Okay. I'll do Ka- Tasha's Mind Whip on the very far guy. Just because. Uh, this one right here? Far big guy, yes. Okay, what's the range of Tasha's Mind Whip? 90 feet. Oh! <laughs> okay. So he has to make an intelligence save. Um. Yep. At advantage is going to be a 16, which bails. So he's going to take 15 Ooh, points yeah. of psychic damage. Yes. Get out of here, buddy. That Damn puts him in and the uh, on his turn, he can move, action, or bonus action. And he only gets one of the three. Okay. All right. That's all I got. Very nice. All right. Lithiath, you're up. All right. I am going to... <clears throat> Uh, uh, they both got out of there. That's great. I'm gonna get over here. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Is this dude up in the air? 
He is up in the air, about 20 feet. About 20 feet. Yeah. All right, I'm going to... Kind of like hovering at like roof level, basically. Right. Um, I'm going to bonus action summon my echo just okay. behind him. Like up, up, up behind up him. Up in the air, kind of floating. Yeah, yep. yeah. And then it's going to take two attacks. Uh, well, let's see if we need them. All right, twenty-two will hit for thirteen. Uh, that's a solid hit. It kind of like falters in the air. It's like flapping, just kind of keep trying to keep itself aloft. And the eighteen will finish it off with twelve more points of damage. Nice All shot. right, it's going to. Hmm. Uh, is going to float down the 15 feet to the ground and we are going to oh boy <laughs> uh, we are going to end our turn there because we right. have nothing else right now okie dokie that'll bring us to Pang he's going to uh, hit Clang with that defensive barrier <laughs> So right. Clang's getting a plus two to his AC and plus two to deck saves. Very nice. I'm going to start clearing off some of these dead guys just so it's a little, a little neater for you guys. Clang's in danger. <laughs> Alrighty. Top of the initiative, the horned devil sees Willow all the way over there and is like, you insolent little whelp. Well, <laughs> never been called uh, that it's before. <laughs> going to choose to take an action, and it is going to hurl three flame balls at you. Oh, oh. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> uh, the first one is a twenty-two. Is this a spell? It is not a spell. Damn it! Uh, the first one's a twenty-two. That's going to be eighteen points of fire damage. The second cool. one is a 14, which is a miss. Yeah. And the last one is, is a crit. Oof. Okay. You're all going to die down here. So the crit is going to be 27 points of fire damage. So 27 Total? plus 18. Because I'm 45. still up, baby. I got six health points. Left. Hey! Come I got get. 10 more than you. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be 45 points of fire damage total. You bet. All right. And you are not concentrating on anything, right? I was concentrating on slow, but I don't give a fuck. Right. I'm on the roof. He has to make a constitution yeah. save for... You're gonna need to, yeah, you're going you're gonna to need to make two con saves. Can I just drop it? You could choose to drop it, yeah. Because it's on the peasants, and I'm on the roof, so I don't really care. Okay, yeah, so... Okay, then I will okay. remove the slow tokens for moments, yeah. guys. Okay. That cool. is his turn. Up next are the spines, devils, the little flying fuckers. Luke, okay. he has to take a, uh, a a save against the insect plague. You're right. He is staying there. Um, okay, so he is going to make a Constitution saving throw at advantage. Is a 14, which I believe just meets saved. it. Meets it. Yeah. So that's going to be nine points of piercing there. Okay, because he can't move because of the. Um, Nice fucking wombo combos, guys. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. So that's going to bring us to the Spined Devils. Um, this one's going to fly out his 40 feet. Uh, kind of get right there. This one's going to kind of fly up on the roof here. This one's going to stay right where he's at. They've each got three attacks. Uh, so we're going to do three attacks at Harper. Okay. Uh, so the first one's a 10 with um, Mirror Image. Um, mirror Image, I I'm on my spells. One second. Mirror image is such a hard spell. Why do I keep using such a it? fucking clunky spell? It, it is, it, but it does it. I get it. Um, with two duplicates, you must roll an eight or higher. Okay, so the eight is that's going to target a duplicate. Yes. Uh, so the first one targets a duplicate. Um, with a spine is going to be a crit, so that duplicate Oof. is gone. Well, that was just uh, the, rude. The second one targets the duplicate. Um, that's going to be another crit. Holy fuck, that duplicate's gone. 
At least I'm wasting these crits on the duplicates. Yeah, seriously. Uh, and then the third one is at you at disadvantage because of the cloak of displacement. Yup. Uh, so at disadvantage is going to be an 18. Uh, I'm good. Yeah, no. I'll take it. Okay. So that's going to be six points of piercing plus four points of fire for a total of 10. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad at all. These guys are not super bad. Um, we've got three shots at Lathiath from uh, this. Or, sorry, this one shot at Harper. This one's going to shoot at Lathiath. Q, sorry. Um, so at Q, three attacks. Okay. Uh, eight is going to miss. Nine is going to miss. And 23 is probably going to hit. Yep. So that's going to be uh, six points of piercing plus three of fire for a total of nine. Okay. All right. And then this last one is going to shoot out at forge three attacks. Um, 14, 16, and 14, all three just ding, 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 bouncing off of that tanky ass armor. Love to see it. Okay. Oh, Ooh, boy. Okay. The ice devil is going to go. Um, he's going to move up and out, kind of actually pushing these commoners to the side as he just kind of burrows through. And he's going to get face to face with you, Forge. Of course he is. <laughs> um, we're going to make three attacks, one bite, one claw, one tail. It's All nice right. knowing you guys. <laughs> it's the, bite. Fine. the bite is a 20 to hit. Yes. That's a miss. The claw is a 15 to hit. Yes. And the tail ooh, is a crit. Yep, and I'm probably going to be okay. down. So that is going to be 19 points of bludgeoning damage plus 26 points of cold damage. I was down from the 19. Alrighty, so with that tail just boom, lights out, you see a flash of white and you fall unconscious. Nice knowing you guys. <laughs> it's an action to feed a potion, right? It is an action to feed action. a potion to a friendly, yes. I was going to say, go figure the guy who can revive um, someone. Hey, I get my death save before. <laughs> you do get your death save. So with that, with going unconscious, the cloud of insects will fade because you lose concentration. Right. But okay. the uh, spiritual weapon stays. It just can't do it. Spiritual weapon. Correct. So does daylight. Oh. So does daylight. It's just daylight shining all the crown. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a concentration. So daylight is not concentration. Stay. You're right. Okay. Yep, that just stays until dispelled. Okay, that'll bring us to Forge. I need a death saving throw. Oh my god! Oh, this is, no. this is oh! Forge. This is hey, oh. hey, hey! You have tea leaf points. You have you tea leaf points. You do have tea leaf points if you and want to spend them. It but may, that is... it may be more cost effective to spend that to get rid of the, the two one. of them. Yeah. This is it. This is That's how Forge goes. Can we change the rules that they carry over at all, or no? No, you lose huh? them. You die, you lose them. If you if you die, you do lose them. Don't be like Tick Tick. Don't <laughs> die with them on you. <laughs> so it's completely up to you. I mean, don't let anybody pressure you. Nope. Take a look at initiative. Um, it's completely your call. But that is two failed death saving throws as it stands right now. I have faith in Clang. All right, all right. So go ahead and mark those down. That'll yep. be it for Forge's turn. That'll bring us to Harper P. Swiddington up on the rooftop. All right. Um, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. He just keeps running over the roof edge to this one. 50, 56. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm losing. Care. He's thinking how much he actually likes Forge. No, he's trying to find the pearl. He's double moving. He's got a plan, sort right. of. So, unfortunately, with that movement, you would have moved through an enemy. Even over the roof? Yes, he's oh. on the roof. Oh! Yes. Okay. He's um, a fine little bat buck. Well, then, I would have seen him, though, for certain, then, right? Yeah. Okay. 40. Actually, then, there's another one right here, too, which you would have ran right past. Oh, then I'm not going to fuck around with that shit. Sorry. I, it's, it's tough to tell. <laughs> Yeah, All so right. the, the... No, you good, you good. Well then I'm uh I'm an Eldritch Blast the one on the roof next to us. Okay, go for it. Uh, Eldritch Blast. A uh, nine is a miss. 
but the 16 will hit. Uh, for 7 plus 2 is 9 points. That's exactly how much health he had. That's a kill. Good job. Oh, Lord. <laughs> All righty. We're getting spicy here. Anything else, Harper? Nah, I think that... Well, I think I am going to continue with my movement then. But... <laughs> 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Over the water. That's a good plan. I'm flying over the water. All right. No, no, no. He's full on running in air. <laughs> okay, I love it. Because <laughs> he's just started running and he hasn't, it hasn't picked up that he's on the edge yet. Okay. All righty. That'll bring us to Clang. Oh, man. Yeah, he's going to have to stay within range and go for it. Okay, kind of like pedaling around. Yeah. So he's going to use an action to... Like, like... Give a potion. All right. I'm rolling it for six. Six health back to Forge. So Forge, you are conscious but prone. Yeah, I still have some movement, uh... He's not going to lay on Forge, but he's going to try to cover him. Okay, kind of like body blocking a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I like it. Oh, Alrighty. Man. This might be how the kobold goes. <laughs> might be how the robot goes. <laughs> yeah, you guys are in a bad spot. Um, Bonus action, bonus actions. I... Oh, man, I am going to hiss at them. Uh, so every enemy within 10 feet of me, you guys have advantage against with my Draconic Cry. Hey, all right, Draconic Cry, let's go. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's uh, everybody in this immediate area from in me. That, in that, yeah. The 10 feet. So, yep. yeah, I think uh, okay. everybody. <laughs> everybody. Oh, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, good fucking turn, good plays, good teamwork. That's going to bring us to the bearded devil, who just wants to finish off this little rat kobold in front of him that's cut him a couple <laughs> times. Uh, so we're going to make a couple attacks against you, Clang. Okay. First with the glaive is a 10 to hit. Miss. Second attack with the beard is a 17. That's a double miss, miss. on his end. All right, that'll bring us to the bone devil. Uh, the bone devil... Uh, Forge is on the ground. He's actually going to turn away, and he has that uh, harpoon in his hand. He sees this little halfling <laughs> running through the sky. <laughs> We're like, oh, no, you don't. Um, so he is going to turn and make this uh, this harpoon attack against Harper at disadvantage. At disadvantage is a 12. You. Yeah! <laughs> just right yep. past him and he kind of yanks it back and sort of growls and looks um he's actually yeah we're gonna actually make a jumping leap we'll provoke an opportunity attack from forge you're prone so it'll be at disadvantage but he's gonna leap back onto this boat over so here. you have and you have a flat attack you have a flat attack that's correct okay damn the 12 is going to be a miss. <laughs> Alrighty. For all I did for you. <laughs> Just, hey, you, know, you brought me back. back. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, that'll all bring right. us to the commoners. These commoners are going to move and just start swarming around. Um, these ones are going to start climbing up onto the roof. They'll use their full action to get up here. They're just oh, kind God. of like, they're like World War Z style, like, like just crawling towards you this one's going to kind of go around the corner this one's going to move up this one's going to kind of go this way this one's going to run towards this one more coming out of the building these guys are moving up these guys are going to come out of this building this one's moving up you get the sense like there is an entire district of commoners here um let's see willow you're gonna miss uh, Lithiath, you are going to take two points of piercing damage as, like, a little something sharp, like a stick, 
kind of gets thrown at you. Clang. They beat my 19? Ooh, good throw, girl. I'm just going with, like, just mass rolls at this point. Like, I'm just basically rolling. Yeah, no, like, I'm, I'm not going to go I'm rolling, like, 10d20 at a time, and if I see a natural 20 in there, I'm like, okay, that's a hit. Um, <laughs> pretty much. Um, we've got a swarm of attacks over here against Clang. Um, none of those are going to get through that AC. He's um, just like full trash can right now, like seriously, shield above his head. Me and just... you. We've got a few attacks. One of them is going to get through at Harper. Harper, you're going to take two points of piercing damage. Was that a disadvantage? It was, yeah. Okay. Ow. Yeah. You nicked me. And that'll bring us to Willow. So Willow, you've got these like people like climbing up on the roof behind you, trying to get to you. Yeah. I do, huh? Um. (laughs) (laughs) So I do. (sighs) Okay. Uh, Willow. What? Real quick, Willow, make me a charisma saving throw. (gasps) Uh, Charisma? Mm-hmm. Hey. Did I fail? Did I fail? You you feel this kind of like fight or flight, like you're in the moment, the, the adrenaline's flowing, and there's this like invasive thought that creeps into the back of your mind, and it's not, it feels like your own, but it's also foreign, and you just feel this little thought of, wow, these people are obnoxious, they're in my way. It would be so easy to just incinerate them all and focus on the real goal. And you kind of immediately dismiss that, that like, it's like an invasive kind of like from the back corners of your mind. That like, yeah. Ah! Okay. It's not enough to like compel you to do it. It's just that like little creeping tendril. Yeah. That little seed of doubt. Oh boy. Um. Oh, do you, I'm just gonna. Okay. Um. Bonus action. I'm gonna drink my greater healing potion thing. Okay. I forget. Two D. Two D. Forty. Uh, that'd be four D four plus four. Right. Oh, thank Ooh. God. That was good. Not bad. Enough. Good soup. Good soup. Twenty-three. All right. Oh, I'll lift that. Okay. Um. And then I'm a little scared to do this. But these okay. guys are fucking annoying. So I'm <gasps> gonna cast Dimension Door. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I thought I was waiting for purple. <laughs> no, I'm gonna cast Dimension Door, and I'm gonna blip. Oh, that's my thing. So you can go up to so dement. Sorry, is it dimension door or is it thunder step? Dimension door. I oh, so you're, okay. So I you're not killing to them. To do dimension so, door. So with dimension door, uh, you can go up to 500 feet away. The map is yours, lady. Oh my lady. god! Look at all these dead people at the bottom. I know. I'm, <laughs> making, I'm making a pile. I'm making a pile. <laughs> sorry. I was just like, ooh, all the corpses in the harbor. Okay. So oh. you like to land right there. I'm gonna back it up, like I don't know. I fucking know. Right there is good. Okay. Good enough. Willow, for the first time after you emerge in a cloud of smoke and brimstone, you can just barely see on the fringes of your vision. Right here is the source of that darkness. Oh, should have walked over to that fucker. Yeah. <laughs> You can only I mean Willow is a pretty intelligent person. You can only assume that this is the Nightfall Crystal or the Nightfall Pearl, whatever you want to call it. Oh, okay. This is your objective. Um, fuck. Okay. Hmm. <sighs> yep. Flipped. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, oh boy. Hmm. Well that's all I can do this. Yeah, see, well, that was your that was your action, so you still have movement and a bonus. Or you used your bonus action no, to drink. So you still have I some didn't... movement. Oh, well. Fuck, man. Um. Like, so I can get onto the boat? Yeah, you can move four, uh, 35 feet. 
that, that was like 20 or something. I don't That's know. 20 That's right there, yeah. Good I'll, enough? I'll okay. And you can see it kind of floating, almost suspended, just like slowly rotating. Pretty. Alrighty, that'll bring Ooh. us to Lathia. Alright, uh, Leviath is in save people mode, so he's going to get over here. He's going to use his action to feed Forge a greater healing potion. Uh, unfortunately, you can't feed him from that I can, range. I can, I can share a spot with Clang. I just put myself not on Clang. Well, okay, okay, you can share it, but you can't end your turn there. Okay, so that makes sense. Yeah, playing okay. be small. Yeah, so you, yeah. you'd have enough movement to kind of get there and get back. Okay. Okay, anyway. Uh, feeding Forge the potion. Okay. Uh, you get 19 health back. Oof, that's nice potion. That's nice. Wow. Uh, I'm going to then have my Echo get over here so that we have advantage on this guy. Whew. We're going to action surge. Ooh. We're oh, going yeah. To, Fighters. <laughs> yeah. We're going to attack this uh, bearded devil. Ooh, and the fucking crit. Let's Fuck. go. That's 16 oh, nice. points. Nice shot. All right. Still standing. Second one is also at advantage. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, shit. 24. 24 will do it. Shabby. That'll take him out. And with Here. that... 11? Okay, I'm going to then uh, unleash Incarnation and have it shoot from uh, my crossbow. Okay. Do, do, do at the, the bone devil, that like the one okay. on the ship. Gotcha. 18 is going to be a miss. All right. I'm looking at him. Uh... It's still the round. They have advantage on the attack. All right. Yep. Bonus action. I'm going to swap places uh, with. I think it's a bonus action. I can spend my superiority oh. die because I moved more than five feet. Oh, for and a yeah. 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 And, yep. and I'm going to swap places with Clank. Okay. Just <laughs> get out of here, little one. <laughs> Yoink. What? <laughs> uh, so. He is now technically behind us, uh, and that is going to end our turn. She could have tried to hit me when I ran away. Uh, she did, and she missed. Okay. Yep. All right, and then Clang, you have uh, oh, add one to your AC. And end my turn. All right, uh, Kling, you're also 11. no longer you're also no longer poisoned. Okay, cool. I forgot about that. That's my bad. Okay. Okie dokie. Beautiful. Uh, so that is what Thai. Plus one to AC. You said. <laughs> okay. That'll bring us to Pang. Pang is going to. Uh... Get right there and uh, give Clang half cover. <laughs> okay. So. Stacking the AC bonuses. We need Just me them. sitting here with 23 AC for this round. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Top of the round, the Horned Devil is going to just kind of cackle. It's going to look at Willow, kind of look back at the, the Pearl, look back at Willow, flap its wings, and it's going to come... Full in melee with you. Motherfucker. Um, fuck, okay. fuck, fuck. So it's Hello. literally got like this like devil pitchfork looking. Like it's it's a pretty stereotypical looking devil. Um it's gonna come at you with um two pitchfork attacks and one tail attack. Oh god. Don't I will So the first pitchfork attack is gonna be a twenty seven to hit. That hits. That'll be twenty <laughs> points of piercing. Okay. The second one is going to be a natural one. 
Oh, oh, suck it, buddy. <laughs> oh, third one, this barbed, almost like spade-like tail kind of shoots straight for your chest. Uh, that's going to... Oh. What'd you do? Fuck. That's a crit. You... That's a crit. <laughs> I know that O. I know that O anywhere. <laughs> so, I had three health points left. Okay. Fair. So, but... What all can I spend healing points on? This is fucking bad. So what what would um, happen now? I need You gonna be hurt. <laughs> okay, so if if so, you would go unconscious from the tail mm-hmm. attack, but you also suffer an infernal wound. So each time each time you start your turn, you lose hit points. Like total permanently? No, you just take damage at the start of each of your turn. But oh, okay. if you are unconscious and making death saving throws, that's an that's automatic an auto failed at the start of each of your turns. Yeah. Yeah, one roll. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so what can I spend my tea leaf points on other than our death save free? Um, death you roll? could you could make him re-roll that attack. Yeah, I will spend my one tea leaf point to make him re-roll that attack. Right, minus one Fuck tea leaf boy. point re-roll attack. Okay, so re-rolling the tail attack uh, is... Ins- wow. Instead of a crit, it is now a 12. Which misses. <laughs> oh. I had and one wow. point, and that was worth it. <laughs> and that is a oh, tea leaf yes. point well spent. Woo! Woo! I'm conscious, though, right? <laughs> no, she's still conscious, because that attack did not miss. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so she's got three hit points. I got three. Is- I'm living on a dream, baby. This yep. session in oh. particular is taking years off of my life with the stress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, alrighty, that is the Horn Devil's turn. Now we got the Spine Devils, these little flappy fucks. Uh, we still got a couple of them mm-hmm. flapping around. Um, so actually, these guys are gonna focus. They're gonna take the fight to the skies. So we're gonna fly in to uh, melee range with Harper. Um, okay. And instead of making the spine attacks, we're going to make some melee attacks. So they're going to make a bite and a fork attack each. Okay. So at disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, you took you took one of the um, the bottle attacks, did you yep, not? Yep, so I am, I am normal to hit. Okay, normal to hit. So the bite on the first one is going to be a five. The fork is going to be a six. The second one's attacks is going to be a four. And the third one's attacks is going to be a 13. All misses. Oh, misses. They're just kind of like scrap. It's almost like a Tasmanian devil smoke ball up there. It's like a dog fight in the sky. Okay. okay. That's all their turn. Um, Let's see. The ice devil's going to go. Huh. He has an ace up his sleeve. I don't know if he wants to use it just yet. It's not. It's not time. It's not time. <laughs> We're going to go brute force method. We're going to go uh, with the full round of melee against Forge. So three attacks on Forge. The bite is an 18. Forge is prone, by the way. Okay. So the bite is an 18. <laughs> okay. The claw is a 23. Miss. It's a miss. And the tail is a 25. Meets it. Okay, so the 25 is going to hit. That's going to be 14 points of bludgeoning I'm plus 9. Minus 3. Minus 3, uh, minus three is 11. Okay, go ahead and roll the intercept die. Holy mother god. Okay, so. Thank you, thank you. That's going to be 14 minus 3 would be 11 plus 9 cold, which would be 20. Minus 16 is going to be 4 points of damage. That's manageable. Thank you. That's manageable. <laughs> <Thank> Holy <laughs> fuck. Okay. The Ice Devil is reconsidering its tactics now. Um, oh. That'll bring us to that. That'll bring us to Forge. Okay. Uh, so, I know it's half movement to stand up. Correct. But I'm still wearing the, uh, the hat. I'm right on the edge there. Would it be a penalty to just push myself the five feet? to uh, stand up on the edge because I have climbing speed due to the hat of confined spaces. So technically standing up isn't like a climbing thing? I, I see what you're going for, though. So you're Kinda trying just... to get... 
You're trying put to get my like feet here, on the right? side. Yeah, and just like walk sideways because the hat can find spaces. It's a stretch, but I'll give it to you. It's a stretch. It's a stretch. It's not a rooftop, but I see what you're going for. This is a tight circle. It doesn't say it has to be a, a rooftop. It's just straight climbing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I turn to the left. I say, get the rest to safety. Don't try. And then everything goes dark for all of them. I use the staff of swarming insects. Uh, I take one charge from it to give okay. us all... Let me... Put it for you. Oh, you're doing the uh, the um insect cloud. The insect cloud, not the insect plague. Okay. Right. Uh, so one charge. Flying insects for a thirty foot radius, heavily obscured. Okay. Why? Can't so. I... And. I, how can I move around the uh, the commoner there? Is there any way can I squeeze in between the commoner and the big guy there? Like, uh, where are you trying to go? If you point, I want to move south and get the uh, the wing fella within the the aura, so he can't see Willow. So I want to try. Fortunately, you'd have to try to shove that guy out of the way. That's not a that's not a square you can pass through there. Unfortunately. How deep's the harbor? Uh, tough to say. It's dark. <laughs> Take a walk. Take a walk. I don't, I, I don't need to gone. breathe. Oh. I, I don't have a necessity to breathe, so I can literally yeah. just walk underwater. <laughs> <laughs> Not to the boats. Take a walk. <laughs> I walk under the, uh, uh, the edge of that, the, the dock. You know what I mean? Under the wood. Underneath? I'm walking upside down with my head in the water. <laughs> Underneath, because I don't need to breathe. So I don't Fuck get no. you. <laughs> Fortunately, this one here is a stone pier, so there's no space underneath it. Just the wooden part, though. Once Just I get the, to that. Once oh, You could do that. Underneath that, yeah. Yep. And uh, how much movement did I use to get to that spot? So you used half of your movement to stand up. So you'd have 5, 10, kind of like 15 would put you like there underneath. Make sense? I'm just going to move myself to the side. So Okay, yeah. And that'll provoke one opportunity attack. They can't see me. You're right, because it's heavily obscured. Big brain plays. Oh, <laughs> baby. Okay. Love D&D. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, man. Can I see you? I still have my bonus. Uh, how far away from Willow am I? 45. 45. Feet. Not a plan, man. <laughs> so I am going to I think. third level healing word Ooh. Willow. Oh, okay. No, I ain't going to do that down, though. 14 <laughs> health back to Willow. 14. And that'll be my turn. Fucking the plays. Okay. Um, that was just this play before. <laughs> that'll bring us to Harper. Na, 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 na. Thunder! We're thunder stepping oh. out of there. Okay. Yo, bitch, you steal my move. Um, Fuck off, it's my move! That's <laughs> literally my play! So those two can make the con saves. I really don't yep. care about it. And I'm right here. Uh, so the first one's a 16. Second one is a 17. So they're yeah. both going to take half damage. Yeah, yeah half from the thunder. 15. And I would like to take my free item interaction and do something really dumb and grab the Nightfall Pearl! All right. It's like... It's fairly big. It's like the size of like I am bear hugging whatever's there. It's yeah, it's not massive. It's it's um like if you've ever seen like the heart diamond, it's like that sort of guard. Um it's yep. got this like weird sort of like black and red sort of twirling shadows inside of it. It's mesmerizingly beautiful. As you touch it, you grab it, you feel like a slight almost like magnetic kind of like 
there's there is some magical force like affixing it in place, but it's easy to overcome. There's, there's a little bit of a resistance, but you yank it and you're holding it. Yep. Make me a charisma saving throw. Okay. Sure, no problem. I can do that. Uh, charisma saving throw is going to be an 18. All right. Your mind, similarly to that experience walking down Melora's way and, and then those intrusive thoughts, you are momentarily overwhelmed you are consumed by all of these horrific moments of shame and embarrassments and guilt and regret and all of these extremely heavy emotions kind of overcome you for a moment and you in this moment harper feel like the slimiest shadiest most piece of shit worthless like there is a real self-loathing that comes with holding this uh which is normal for harper (laughs) but it's it's momentary and it's Uh, fleeting and you know you have a job to do you are actively fighting against these thoughts these compulsions so going forward as long as you are in contact with the uh nightfall pearl it'll be um basically ascending saves it'll be every turn it gets a little bit harder oh good yay just stuff it in your raining i'm going to i know (laughs) Alrighty. uh anything else for harper no sir Alrighty. that'll bring us to clang it is dark uh, it is dark but clang knew that there was something in front so (laughs) Does Clang start he's, eating the bugs? <laughs> he's going right for the big guy. <laughs> Alright, so um, you're going to be uh, at disadvantage because you cannot see your target. He'll be screaming while he does it, so I get a fly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> green Flame Blade. Ooh, interesting. Okay. So that is a weapon attack on top of it. Okay. So this is the attack. Fifteen. Uh, Fifteen is going to be. No, it's a twelve because that's this first one. So twelve. Gotcha. Okay, so twelve is a miss. Okay. Well, green flame blade requires it as part of the casting, so I can't get my okay. extra attack. Gotcha. Okay, dokie. Uh, Anything else? Nope. That'll be it. He's trying to wipe bugs off his face. Alrighty, the bone devil's going to go. Now is this um insect cloud? It's not difficult terrain, right? Uh no, I believe it's no. okay. just straight, just heavily, heavily obscured. obscured. He can't see shit. Okay. Um he's going to go five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, get right up on Willow kind of just like fighting through the cloud of bugs towards the nightfall pearl where they all know it sees harper and it sees you um it's gonna make the harpoon attack at harper okay uh at disadvantage because of your cloak yep uh would have been a crit but is instead a 20 to hit I would like the second chance. Or is that... There you go. Nice. Okay, so... Using second chance, he's going to re-roll the attack. Still at disadvantage. Yes. Uh, it's going to be an 11, which misses. misses. Yes. Dick! Oh. <laughs> Dick. All right. <laughs> he is the bone devil, so he's trying to bone you. Okay. <laughs> 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 Alrighty. Uh the commoners turn. They are just going to continue to fucking swarm. Um they are lashing out, running directly into the bugs. Are they hitting blood. each other? They are not hitting each other, but they're trying to swing out and it's just they're basically body blocking is really what they're doing. Um They're all just coming these ones are coming. They're just making a human wall. Um 
rid of that. That. Okay. Um. That'll bring us to Willow. I have a question. What's up? How far is like we're we're still in the city? You're still in the city, yes. How far? Like, is it more than five hundred feet to the guild hall entrance? Definitely. Or wherever we came yes. from. Okay. Yeah, you're like several Definitely. city blocks. Yeah, you're okay. several city blocks. Yeah. I'm just like right it's hard south to shore. Yeah, I kind of. I forgot it already. So okay. Um. Well, since the bitch stole my move, I'm gonna just do it anyway because. <laughs> I'm gonna thunderstep because it'll provoke a con save, and I have a staff that lets me get healing from that. So You're I'm gonna fucking thunderstep out of here, and it hits both of them right now. Both of y'all, nice. yeah. Both of y'all. <laughs> both of them. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and cast that. The uh, horned Ooh. devil's gonna make his constitution saving throw at advantage, which is a save, so he I is going to take. I'm gonna bop it next to her. So he's going to take eight points of thunder damage, and you're going to heal for four. Sweet. And then the bone devil's going to make his save at advantage is a success. So he's going to take eight damage, and you're going to get healed for four. So you're going to heal for eight damage from that. Sweet. Right. Um, and, and then bonus. Are you, and oh, you're ending already, up right next to Harper? Yeah, I'm going to okay. sit next to Harper. Hey. Um, hey. I would like hey, to roll a up. healing. What? What's up, boy? Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna you got uh, the pearl. bonus actually roll a uh, health potion. Okay. You know, so seven health seven. back. All right. And then, hey Harper, how's it going? Oh, it's been better. Honestly, probably not great for Harper right now. <laughs> Yeah, nah. You doing yeah. okay, buddy? He is like pale as a ghost, just like, yeah. Okay. Just get ready to catch the rain. <laughs> That's... Yeah, well, it's gonna be okay. I'm here. I'm here. You're not gonna die. All right, <laughs> that's it. Alrighty, let's die if you're up. Alrighty, we are going to. Uh, I was told to get people out, but I, <laughs> I can't. Uh, if we're surrounded. So. Uh, you know, we're going to pull out the halberd. And we're going to try to attack this guy. Uh, Trying to attack the uh, ice devil? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 19 will hit. Awesome. Is the... Uh, um, is the halberd magical? No. Okay, so this is going to be half damage, so he'll take six points of slashing there. Great. Okay. And then another one. 16. Gonna be a miss. And then I'm going to use my second Ace of Unleash Incarnation to have the Echo attack as well. Okay. Um, shit. 25. 25 will uh, hit, so that'll be half of that will be five. Uh, unless the unless the echo counts as magical because it's a summon. Uh, it, I don't know. It's, it's whatever. Um, echo, it's whatever you're it's wielding. Whatever weapon type is. Yeah, yeah. I think it's so, a weapon type. So no. And then uh, frick, we are going to cover Clang and tell him to uh, to a retreat. So we gotta get out of here, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alrighty, that'll bring us to Pang. A uh, player question. Was our objective with this crystal again? Take it back. Get it, get it home. Get it back. Okay. Yeah, so Pang is a uh... Our other objective was not to die, and our third objective was not to kill all the citizens of Kandoria. Which we're not doing too bad at. We, uh, Yeah, I mean, I think we might have to get a couple out of the way. No. A couple suicided into spirit guardians, it's fine. He's going to uh, hit <laughs> I, my more defensive barrier again. <laughs> I'm going to walk really slowly towards you, waving my arms like this! <laughs> and if you're in the way... 
<laughs> yeah, he's just gonna <laughs> roll. He's on roll up and cover okay. playing again. Cool. Alrighty. The horned devil is going to go seething in rage, kind of points out in an infernal yells, end them. Uh, and he is going oh. to throw five or five. He's going to throw. He is going to throw three fireballs. That's tough to say. Cool. Throw three fireballs. Um, like little balls of flame at Harper at disadvantage. Great. Uh, so the first one's a twenty-one. Hit. That that'll hit for fifteen points of fire damage. Mm-hmm. Second one's a straight roll, so that's a thirteen. Yes. And the last one is a straight roll, it's a twelve. So fifteen. Fifteen total. Yes. Oh! I got where's burn from your mother. <laughs> Shit. God, that was such a low point in my life. <laughs> <laughs> these spine devils are buzzing around and all these all these insects they're pretty fully distracted they're gonna kind of just like randomly shoot out some spines so we're gonna do three at the echo and three at clang at disadvantage they're just kind of like just spray and pray at this point um so at disadvantage against the echo is uh one of them's a 17 that hits all right so the echo is dispelled so just put her over, hit him over there, and then three against Clang. Again, kind of just spray and pray at disadvantage. Um, ooh, one of them was almost a crit. That's three misses against uh, against Clang. Go. Alrighty, the Ice Devil's turn. Now. While the Ice Devil cannot currently see Willow and Harper, it can sense that the Nightfall Pearl has been moved from its spot. It's going to pull out its um, its one once per day move, uh, and it is going to use a Wall of Ice. And what it's going but- to do is it's going to make a 20-foot hemisphere dome. It's basically going to... um, We're like under the dome. Yes, it's going to put a (laughs) dome right here and basically protect... It in ice. So as this appears, you guys are almost like inside an igloo. Always ice. Now, as it spawns, when the wall appears, each creature in its space is pushed out by the shortest route. The creature chooses which other wall ends up on unless the creature is in capacity. Um, you guys need to both make me DC 17. Actually, no, because you're not being pushed by the wall. You're being captured by the wall. So you're not being yeah. forced moved. Okay. Um, the wall can be damaged and breached. Um, okay. Yeah, so you guys are captured inside this wall. Inside this dome. That is his turn. That's his full action. It might be that. It might be that plan. Huh. Okay, nothing, nothing. That'll bring us to Forge. Forge is gonna continue running upside down under the dock. Okay. <laughs> I love how you turned your token upside down. <laughs> So I'm able to move to there because I was directly under the, yep. the other guy. So now the other two are within that. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. Couldn't get close enough for a searing smite. Um. Mm-hmm. 
Is there any uh, metal that the uh, the dome is touching that any I would be able to metal see? Metal that the dome is touching. Any metal. Uh, I'm gonna say it's most. I think it's. I think it's all wood. Just kind of looking at the map. I don't think there's any metal that the dome is touching currently. Um, this is fucking well, tense. shit. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll yeah, be fine. we got plans. I guess. Um, we'll make it. I guess I'm just going to. I'm going to action dash to okay. get closer to them. Uh, does the dome go under the water? Am I blocked off from going underneath the dock? Um, it's hemispherical, so it's kind of like an igloo. So I'm going to say no, okay. you could go under the dome. So I'm just going to continue. I just want to make sure that they're obscured so they're less at risk. Um, okay. And then I'm going to use my bonus action to move the, uh, the spiritual weapon down 20 next to the big guy, and he's going to take its swing. Okay. That house been kind of just sitting there, hasn't it? <laughs> and that's going to miss. Nine is a miss. Mm. Alrighty. Harper, your turn. Mm. At the start of your turn, I need a charisma saving throw. Yep, I know. Oh, bother. Yeah, that's an oh, eight. Harper. With an eight, that is a failure. You are, for this turn, incapacitated by doubt. You are so... You are so just... Tr like, entranced just, what are by... We gonna, like, what are we gonna do? Like, we got it, but what's, what's, what's the point? Like... How are they gonna? How are we gonna? Like, what's gonna? I'm so glad I obscured the vision to them no, now. Could be... <laughs> that could have been real bad. <gasps> what's, what, why, All why? right. Why? Why, why am I trying? Harp. Talk like that. He's gonna sit down. Oof. And just look at the pearl. can't do it and that's his turn all right that'll bring us to clang clang's gonna just start kneecapping people with his shield on our <laughs> attacks <laughs> all right. people oh, he's just gonna turn to the people next to him and just start hitting him with non-lethal just hitting him with the shield okay all right yeah ten. easy enough just bunk um so i'm gonna mark the ones actually i'll just I don't know how to mark them. I'll, I'll put the X on them, but they're not dead. I'll have yeah. a, a separate pile. And just just kind of hit yep. the one next to uh... incapacitated. Yes. Fourteen. Uh, <laughs> boom. And then just I'm gonna probably provoke the. I'm gonna definitely provoke the attack, but okay. Clank's just just screaming, running into the crowd to get away. Now. All right. The ice devil's gonna make one opportunity attack at you. Yeah. Uh, that's. No! Is that a crit? crit? That's a fucking crit! No! I'm okay. Oh my god! I'm intercepting Let's go! I told okay, you go ahead. get that out, or you can make him re-roll with a tea leaf point. You could spend the tea leaf point to re-roll. Mm, mm, it's probably worth it. I do have nine of them. <laughs> yeah, I'll use one. Well, you just spent ten for the back... Or, no, you haven't spent... I haven't spent... I, I saved up for the backstory, and then I wanted to get a mount, so... <laughs> 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 Alright, so would you like to would you like to spend one? Yes, I am using one to have him reroll. Alright. Alright, so re-rolling the opportunity attack. Go ahead and mark that on your like character sheet. Anyways. I didn't I, if it quits again, I'm just accepting it. I'm gonna have second character yeah. die in front of Nick. Uh, okay. So. so instead of a crit, it is a twelve to hit. 
There you go. Yeah, that's, that's, a, miss. that's a miss. Okay, so you can go ahead and take your movement. Reroll. Yeah, he just got, he just gonna run into the uh into the mob there. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty, that'll bring us to the bone devil. Um Ugh. What do I do here? <laughs> this is interesting. He can no longer see the crystal, willow, or He can't see the harbor. crystal. He can't see the dome at all. And he I'm hiding under a now. dock. <laughs> so he's going to leap, trying to get closer to you guys. This is what he would do. So he's going to leap and come into contact with this igloo that he does not know is there. Kind of like <laughs> bird against a windshield, just... <laughs> <laughs> Right? So now he's stuck on this igloo, and he's like, what the fuck is this? That fucking asshole, like, that stupid ice bastard. Of course he does this. What a selfish dick. Doesn't communicate at all. Horrible workplace communication. But he knows the crystal's still inside. So what he's going to do is he's going to try to smash with the harpoon through the fucking ice cube to get to you guys. So he's going to attack a section of the wall. Oh, no. Look. Danger. Great. Um, no surprise. Danger, Mr. T. <laughs> so, the... the Each section, each 10-foot section of the ice wall has an AC of 5 and 30 hit points. Vulnerability to fire and fire damage. Okay. Um, so he does 7 points there. He's going to attack it again. Um, he's going to do uh, 18 points of damage. He's just, like, smashing and clawing through this um, igloo. Uh, he gets one more claw for a 14 for 8. So that's 15 plus 11. Is, he, is, he is close. You can like hear him scratching at the outside, but he cannot quite breach this, this wall just yet. Oh, bother. All right. Commoners swarming in all around you. This far and we're going to die in the dome. Um, Clang, you're going to take six points. With Thiath, you are going to take four points. Willow, you're up. You're muted also. Thank you. I forgot about that. Um, I think I missed it, but did he actually break through? He's almost broken through. I wanted to fire. Just don't. Let out. Yeah. Um. So you can't we see came him, through though. in tunnels, right? Hmm? We came. We showed up via tunnel passageway, right? Um. Well, sort of. You like tunneled out to Cat's Corner and then walked down the street. And the tunnel is within five hundred feet. No, the tunnel's no. farther away than the guild hall right now. How? The, what? Do you, how does that make sense? Wait, more than, if more we than cop a... out, out of a tunnel and then walk down the street, mm-hmm. is it not actually down the street that far? Like, walk down the street means like... You mean... I didn't mean to do that. Alright, no, okay. Um, so, show to players. Just... Yeah, sorry, so, I needed another... It's okay. So, TAC, you can see where TAC is, right? Yes. The tunnel leads from TAC to the cat's corner. That the tunnel's purpose is only to get out of attack without getting immediately swarmed by the mob. From Cat's Corner, you guys walk down those streets, made your way to Melora's Way, and then from Melora's Way, walk down to the key. Holy fuck. Yeah. Well. What's within 500 feet? I'm useless. Just go. You're not we, useless, Harper. We, I'm not leaving. We will ever. Are you um, able to pull people into the ring? No. You could get. Damn. You could probably get back up to the gate, uh, the entrance there to the slums from the key, within five hundred feet. It'd be off the map. Oh, okay. But, okay. Yeah. We'd be out of combat, right? Yeah. Whoa. Do it. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast Dimension Door and take Harper with me, assuming he's okay. willing. I don't have a choice. I'm incapacitated. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you bitch. 
I'm taking you, you with me, little sad fucker. <laughs> you sad right. little fuck. <laughs> you did good. Let's get out of here. <laughs> good luck, uh, guys. Just, you're just you guys saying that. Teleport with the crystal off the map. Uh -huh. Alrighty. That'll bring us to Lathiath. All right. Um, Suddenly, no Lathiath. You notice that although still night, although still dark, the surrounding area somehow feels slightly lighter. Okay. You kind of have this like boost of confidence, almost this this that that weight of this district seems ever so slightly lighter. There's a glimmer of hope there. All right. Uh. <laughs> oh boy, this is. Not good. Um, I think Leth is going to turn this this pedestrian here. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, he's going to clock them with the blunt side of the blade of their halberd. Uh, it's a 16, not a... 20, oh, yeah, easy. But, uh, and Oop. she's just going to put her unconscious. Then we're going to take a step back. You can go ahead and make an opportunity attack if he wants. Yeah, both of them are going to miss. Okay. We're going to do um, a secondary attack to get the one in front of... Yep. Um, okay, yep. Playing nope. unconscious. And... Uh, <sighs> Oh boy, then we're going to bonus action have the uh, Echo reappear and attack with the last Unleash our Carnation at this thing. Okay. Uh, switching our weapon. Shh. Damn it. 18. 18 will just hit. Yes. Oh. For 6. Uh, 18 just hits? Yep. I rolled an 18 earlier and it hit mid. That was against the Bone Devil. Oh, I the believe. Bone Devil. All right, cool, cool. Bone yeah, Devil yeah, yeah. has 19. All right. Uh, Ice Devil has, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. For six. All right, cool. And then can I pick up Clank? Will he I let am, me? I am small, and you can he hear. He is small. <laughs> okay, small. I'm going to pick up Clang, and I'm going to go 5, 10, uh, 15... Uh, 20, 25 gets me here, and we're making our way back. Uh, Make way. Yeah, I still <laughs> have I still have my echo within range, so hopefully they'll attack that. Okay, everyone. And I'm you are trying to keep playing safe. Awesome. Mm. Oh, wait, did we leave, <laughs> wait, did we leave my pingle? <laughs> you guys <laughs> are yep. <laughs> Oh no. Oh, oh, this uh, is going to be Hey, hey, hey they down. also left Forge. It's yeah. fine. I have a plan. <laughs> Pang, 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 what are you doing, little buddy? Uh, he's just going to start booking it. Okay. <laughs> 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 Fucking roll up and scamper. Yeah, he's just going to... So, okay. so technically, uh, that's the point. Can he uh, disengage? Ball up. It shoots its tail inside its halo, completely protecting itself from attacks. It does not say it can't move. No, it he's just gonna like curl up like an armadillo and go. Yeah, it, it, he, <laughs> oh my god! He's gonna <laughs> take, the, take the action to full cover and just armadillo roll <laughs> through the. It's a nice. fucking Gorin. So, uh, Amazing. with full, I think full cover is plus five AC if I remember yes. correctly. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a twenty AC. Okay, so he's yeah. Okay. Boom. <laughs> Boom. I love it. I love it. Okay. That'll bring us to the top of the initiative. The Horned Devil. Now, here's the funny thing. These devils don't know that you guys Dimension Doored out. Nope. Because <laughs> oh, they, they can't see, see you. That's so this funny. devil is just chucking fireballs at this igloo and just melting away chunks of it, trying to get further in. Um, that is why we left Forge there. 
Yeah, the spine devils are gonna swarm the echo and try to hit it. And what's the echo's AC? Seventeen. Uh, so that's just a miss. So they're both just swinging at the echo, who's like fencing them off. Um, the ice devil is going to swing at the echo. All three attacks. Uh, and just obliterate the echo. Okay. Uh, Forge, you're up. It's getting a little bit late, so I am I am yeah. speeding through some of these turns. So Forge told Leth to get everyone on that side out. I yep. saw uh, Willow and Harper pour it out. Yep. So I'm underneath the dock. Yep. I'm going to take off the hat. And I'm just going to sink. <laughs> I'm a robot, and I don't need to breathe. And I'm just going to start marching. I'm just going to walk back to the ship. <laughs> I'm just going to start walking east on the, oh! the ocean until I sense I'm out of the area and into... Uh, <laughs> what's the other area that we cleared up? The, the slums. slums? Until I get... Well, okay. So here's the thing. Take a look at the city map, right? <laughs> Kadoria so is a quest. walled city. So you would have a long ass walk. You could probably go up through some of like the sewage drainers. See how there's like that river. I like that. that. <laughs> We're gonna go up the yep. sewage drain. Yep. <laughs> That'll get you most of the way through to Cat's Corner. You can go back through the uh the secret tunnel there. And I am going to meet up with uh <laughs> with the rest of the crew <laughs> at the tunnels, I'm going to be covered in rats and smell like crap. <laughs> oh, it's right. fine. We it's fine. We have enough cats around the HQ for me that the rats aren't a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, guys, you guys managed to somehow, against all odds, evade this devil onslaught, making your way back into the light, back into the cat's corner back through the tunnels and into the tea leaf adventuring company. Harper has just like uh, completely succumbed mm -hmm. at this point. Just like mm -hmm. just forge forge shows up sometime later. <laughs> smelling of <laughs> hours, two later. Hours, later. hours later. Covered in seaweed, sewage and rats. Uh would like walk him out to the fountain outside and like because oh, no. that's where he takes his baths <laughs> inside just so we have a little bit of time to kill on viewers choice so. inside marigold is anxiously waiting you can see she's made a startling amount of progress on some sort of like scarf that she's been knitting um but as you guys enter up through the trap door and come back into the lounge there's just a look and a sigh of absolute relief then disgust <laughs> hey marigold <laughs> hi um can you take that from him and i point to harper looking like a sad sad <laughs> boy sad boy <laughs> <laughs> Harper, are you okay? He's holding the, um, pearl. He isn't himself right now. Harper, may I? Harper. Give Marigold the pearl. It'll be okay. <laughs> Forge commands. <laughs> Harper, give <laughs> up the pearl. <laughs> Marigold, like gently takes it now here's the thing as she takes it she's got to make a save of her own yep uh so where's Mary? uh can we use action help to um, yeah because we or, guide uh... her i mean she did have warning <laughs> yeah but that'd be with I suppose she, could she steal herself like yeah, yeah. she's got to make a charisma saving throw what? Why? <laughs> Oof. Oh, because she's not a, a player. Can I use a tea leaf point to have help her reroll? Hmm. We're just gonna continuously take each from each other. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Pass the tea leaf point. Oh no, the thing. Yeah. That's a really interesting thought because she is an NPC. 
and you can affect NPC rolls with tea leaf points. I will. This sets kind of a, an iffy precedent, but I'm going to say in this circumstance, I'll allow it if you'd like to spend one tea leaf point. Yeah, sure. Okay, minus one tea leaf point. Uh, Nyx re-roll. So she's going to make another charisma saving throw. It's a straight roll. She's got plus zero. You can see it right there. Mm -hmm. Come on, Marigold. It's better. She takes it, and... Thank you. Um, I'm going to need to spend some time with this, and then we'll destroy it, if that's okay. Hey, Marigold. Mm Mm-hmm. Put it down when you can, okay? It's... Yes. <laughs> is uh, Harper still affected? Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. So, oh, over the Harper. course of the next several hours, Marigold powers through this depression and manages to glean some uh, natural information regarding this. So... You guys learn. You guys have learned a few things from this encounter. Um, some of which you didn't necessarily know, but it's kind of spelled out for real now. Um, so if you're if you're coming back to YouTube to watch and get your plot points, this is where you want to watch. <laughs> um, number one, the Dieban Order is somehow working with or allied with or has access to devils. Big deal. Devils fucking suck. They are very powerful. You guys saw firsthand. Yeah. Number two, this shadow magic, these nightfall pearl, nightfall pearls, are somehow. And Marigold would explain this more in in lore, but it's it's getting late, so I just kind of want to ex exposit. Um, these shadowfall, these nightfall pearls are powered by this weird uh, otherworldly magic that. Marigold could only classify as shadow magic. And along with that, which you've seen the Die Band Order use shadow magic before, this is now just officially giving it the name. How the hell did they... Oh, okay. <laughs> um, it is originating from the Nine Hells. And these... Um, these crystals, these, these pearls, are refined using some sort of power source from the Nine Hells. This is not of this plane. The last thing you learn is that these pearls are powered, almost almost seep energy out of people by exploiting their secrets, their lies, their shame, their doubt. And it almost spreads that like wildfire. Hmm... It gets stronger in the presence of doubt, in the presence of grief, in the presence of shame, in the presence of all of these negative emotions. It sort of drains it like a battery and then uses it to charge this this field of darkness and of influence. Once this has all been learned, Marigold promptly destroys the crystal with relative ease. And in doing so, releases herself and Harper from that grasp of depression. Uh, does anybody there have are, any chocolate? There's, there are lingering effects. There, like you will never forget that low, but you don't feel its grip on you. But that memory is almost like a scar. It takes a few days for you to get out of this funk, Harper, but you manage to kind of pull yourself back and you're yeah, you're back to that yeah. sort of normal, <laughs> spunky self. And Marigold's mood does return as well. So, a few things to go over. Number one, y'all completed the objective with relatively minimal casualties. Looking at my count, only two commoners died and that's because they ran into a spirit guardians. I'm yep. not going to penalize that against you. Those You're going to get full experience. You're going to get full experience for this mission. Rookie numbers. Fuck we yeah, need to guys. pump those numbers up. Hell yeah. You guys are going to gain all 3,000 experience for this mission. Oh, Ooh. daddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big old XP drop. 
You guys all survived. Excellent tactics. Excellent teamwork. Literally Level only two seven. Combinations. Hey, Let's hey. fucking go. Hey, Luke, you don't got to rush all that hero teaser stuff. They both bought in recruits. Did they really? Yeah, yeah. you'll see. Nice. Wait. Okay. <laughs> 3,000 experience. No, I think that I... So my plan <laughs> no, 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 was... No, no, I know. It was 3,000 minus 100 for every commoner that got killed through AoE. So you guys managed to do it pretty fucking solidly. Um, you're going to get 450 gold, just enough to cover potion cost for this mission. Um, oh, well, no, I got an extra 200. Yeah. <laughs> uh, four, 450 gets you a full batch of, of yep. potions if you had none. Um, so 450 gold. Um, you're all going to gain one tea leaf point. Um, Lithiath and Willow are both going to get uh, the DM's choice slash viewer's choice. You guys made it easy with the tie. Um, Thank you. Yep. And there are a couple of magic items that managed to be scavenged. And um, in freeing this district, actually, I would say these magic items come from sort of the, the aftermath, the the human rising up, overthrowing, taking back the quay. Um, actually, Inkfingers would present these as a thank you. So these were taken from the Dieban Order and given to Tack as a thank you for freeing the quay. We have two items. I ask so one thing before we get to the items. Yep. Uh, it's in regards to the companion. Uh, yep. The gifts and treats. No, when a companion does something that would normally earn a player inspiration, you can reward them with an item worth at least 10 gold. Um, and then if they've eaten it or possessed it for longer than eight hours, they increase the bond strength by one. Can I forego my tea leaf for that? I would say absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so instead of the for... yeah, instead of the tea leaf point from this mission, you can use it to increase the bond. Okay. Cool. I like that. That's that, cool. That's a cool. F- nice. I like that. Because it says uh, if it would do something that a player would gain inspiration for, but I mean that's we don't do that companion. It's not going to happen right, a lot. Yeah. This is like the reward at the end of the mission. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if he survives, survive. <laughs> yep. Know. Okay. So bond strength two three. Still no new features, but he's better. He's better. All right. Um. Also, I'm going to control myself here. Uh, I'm going to set a precedence that I can only probably do each of these things like one, not all three <laughs> at okay. the end of a mission. I like that. Because it's like a short rest to play. You can give it a mm-hmm. bath and then you can forego a tea leaf. So that's three bond strengths at the end of every mission. So yeah, I'm going to say the bond is probably... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to limit it to bath, one. The bath is probably a bit much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the foregoing so, the tea leaf or the short rest at the start. Gave me a bath instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we have a few... Two items. The first are the scissors of shadow snipping. These are interesting. I want to see what some people do with this. It's a big blob, but let me read it real quick. As an action, you may make a few snips with these iron shears that cause the shadow of a humanoid creature you can see within five feet of you detach from its source. If a creature is unwilling to give up its shadow, it can make a DC 15 charisma saving throw, retaining the shadow on a success. Whether or not the shadow is snipped, the property of these scissors cannot be used again until the next dawn. The detached shadow is rooted to the spot where it was snipped until you use a bonus action to cause it to behave in one of the following ways, either of which is only possible if you can see the shadow. You control the shadow's movement and make the shadow move up in up to 30 feet across a solid or liquid surface in any direction you choose, including along vertical surfaces, provided it remains within your sight at all times. The shadow is harmless and unable to be harmed, and it is invisible in darkness. It can't speak and doesn't require air, sleep, or nourishment. You can relinquish control of a shadow, at which point it becomes an autonomous and behaves as the DM wishes. It uses the shadow stat block in the monster manual, but is a fey instead of the undead. A creature whose strength is reduced by zero to the shadow's strength during attack does not die, but falls unconscious instead. The creature regains consciousness and all of its strength after finishing a short or long rest. A creature whose shadow has detached from this is cursed. If a shadowless creature is subjected to any spell that ends a curse, or if the detached shadow is reduced to zero hit points, the detached shadow disappears and the creature regains its normal shadow instantly. The other oh, item... Man. Yeah, it's kind of funky. Uh, the other item is the Scythe of the Grim Shepherd. This one's pretty badass. Hey, Griffin Saddlebag. It is Griffin Saddlebag. Um, this one does require attunement. The sharpened horn and skulls of a great ram rest atop this gnarled staff to form a twin-bladed scythe. 
On a hit, this weapon deals either bludgeoning or slashing damage, or twice, plus an extra 1d8 necrotic damage. It gains one charge whenever a creature with a challenge rating of 1 or higher within 60 feet of you is slain, up to a maximum of 10 charges. The staff loses all charges when you finish a long rest, or if your attunement to it ends. While holding the staff, you can expend one or more charges for the following properties. You can expend six of the weapon's charges to cast Circle of Death with the spell save of DC 16. That is a sixth. I think that's like a sixth level spell. Uh, consume soul. You can use a bonus action to expend up to three of the weapon's charges to gain 1d6 plus two hit points for each expended charge. If the Grim Ram is summoned, it also regains any lost hit points. You're asking, what's the Grim Ram? We'll get to that. Um, le lead the damned. You can use an action to expend one of the weapon's charges to attempt to bring an undead creature that you can see under your control. The target must succeed on the DC 16 wisdom saving throw or become charmed by you for one hour or until it takes any damage. A creature with immunity to the charm condition still makes the saving throw becoming charmed as normal on a failure, but will make the roll with advantage. An undead charmed in this way is indifferent towards you and your companions and automatically fails any saving throw against an effect that it would turn it, such as a cleric's channel divinity. You can also summon Grim Ram using two of the weapon's charges. Uh, an all-black goat with four horns. The goat appears in an unoccupied space that you can see within 30 feet of you and re uh, remains until it's reduced to zero or until you use this property again. It's friendly to you and your companions. It uses the stats of a giant goat but is immune to necrotic damage and deals 1d6 extra necrotic damage to any creature it hits with a melee attack. It obeys any verbal commands you issue to it. Uh, has your initiative count but takes its turn immediately after yours. Uh, can use reactions on its own, but the only action it takes on its turn is dodge, unless you use your bonus action to give it a command to take another action. So. Really like that one. That's a pretty cool one. So, which one would we like to bid on first, ladies and gentlemen? Scythe of the Grim Shepherd. Let's yep, do the scythe. I, I, okay. I think most of us are going to be. Yeah. That so, is a well, that is weapon a, if I've ever seen. That's a gnarly weapon. So if you are interested in the Scythe of the Grim Shepherd, go ahead and get those tea leaf bids in now. So the command, in case you forget, slash W space GM and the number. Let's open up the bids right now. Going once. Going twice. Going thrice. Alrighty, we have a winner. For two tea leaf points, this is going to go to Clay. Nice. Oh, it's going to be, it's going nice. to get so chaotic. <laughs> he's it. just he's just amassing animal friends. Yes. Welcome <laughs> to the club. <laughs> yes, all the animal friends. That's uh, gorgeous demo. So, congrats on that. Go ahead and copy and paste that onto your character sheet. Um, it might be on D&D &D Beyond, because it is uh, Griffin Saddlebag. So, you can find it there. Alrighty. And then, let's open it up for the Scissors of Shadow Snipping. So, same command. Uh, splash W, space GM, and then the number. We will open up the bidding for the Scissors of Shadow Snipping now. So, going once... Going twice. Going thrice. We have a winner for one tea leaf point. Uh, this is going to go to Nyx. Nice. All right. Uh, I have a question for you, but I will wait for stream for that. Okay. All right, your own shadow with that. Interesting. I don't know. <laughs> all righty, ladies and gentlemen, that is all we have for today's mission of the Tealish Adventuring Company. We're gonna raid out to Mama K. Let's do that raid mission again. When are you gonna play? Let's get that going. <laughs> Cause she's she's been talking about it for years. We'll get the hypes in there. So, guys, I want all of you to copy and paste that and spam the fuck out of it when we raid Mama K, okay? Let's get some more players in here. Let's fucking pressure people. This is a good time. <laughs> Everybody copy and paste that and spam the fuck out of it. All right, guys, we love you. Have a wonderful weekend. Happy Labor Day if you're in America. 
and we will see you next Thursday with uh, the backstory mission for Ferdinand Scars. Yeah. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Catch you next time. Toodles. Bye. Bye, everybody. See ya.